like, like Scoob. The X-Audio didn't record properly. So most of it is taken from the Zoom recording and sounds kind of bad. Everyone at the Sunday Movie Marathon apologizes. Amazing. You can't kill the boogie man. Welcome to the Sunday Movie Marathon. My name is Max. My name's Melvin Do. <laughs> <laughs> Um, my name's Scooby Doo, and it's well, <laughs> <laughs> it's episode fifty of the Sunday Movie Marathon. It's um, it's October, and we're doing some more scary movies um with drinks. We are. Like we said in the last episode, we've got some alcohols. So, uh, what are you guys drinking? Eighteen plus only, of course. <laughs> Um, so I had a little, um, one of the, like, the miniatures of Dead Man Fingers rum, and then I'm going to move on to Red Leg once I finished it. Got some Fanta Fruit Twist with it. I'm drinking the, uh, beautiful glittery gin that I had about two or three episodes ago, and I'm just finishing it off. Glitter gin, eh? Dang. I got some, um, watermelon absolute vodka. Going down very nice. It sounds with, uh, so it's good. It's really nice. Yeah, like that's like the only vodka brand I would really go with. I would, like the rest is like, like, like Tesco own or like little own <laughs> vodka. But, oh god, I don't. Yeah, you've got to pay good, really or you've got to suffer. <laughs> yeah, it's just like drinking ethanol or uh, paint stripper, mm. as my friends used to say. Yeah, no point to it. It's not nice. It's not fun. Why would you put yourself through that? There was like, yeah. There's like for teenagers, I think. That's Going that's through it. Yeah, that's what I remember. Um, yeah. Underage parties and people uh, getting other people to buy like seven pound Glens or whatever. Oh, Glens, yeah. Glens was the <laughs> one. Uh, yeah, Glens suck. <laughs> and it does. Ooh. So, how are we doing this week? Doing good. Yeah. It's Lovely. been a. It's been a year since we started the podcast now. Yeah, we're we watched... old now. Yeah. So we're recording this on a Wednesday and we watched the films for this week on Monday, which was the exact year anniversary since the first episode came out. Oh, congratulations, everyone. Uh, big shout out. Congrats to, all, to everyone the... who's come on the podcast. We yeah. had that period where um, we weren't doing too hot because of pandemic. We weren't doing what we wanted to be doing with the podcast. It was elevated slightly by having a lot of guests on. So big thank you to all, all of those guys who came on. And uh, obviously to to Connor as well, who started the podcast with us, made it what it is. Really I would say there. congrats to you two for uh, staying the whole way. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> We've done it. Yeah. Thank 50 you episodes as well. As well. Coming, coming in. Yeah, 50 oh, you're episodes. welcome. Yeah. yeah, I know. Who would have thought? <laughs> yeah, I, I actually I didn't expect we'd get this far because I know what I'm like especially. I'll decide, you know, I want to do a series or something and I'll start it and then just give up after like two or three episodes. So like for mm-hmm. me to be a part of something that's gone on this long. Yeah, we've seen your other podcasts, that. Chris. <laughs> yeah, well, we're quite determined on this, I think. Like I'm especially determined on this. I want it to carry on. It's like the highlight of my week every week. So. Honestly, I actually love it. I mean, like I know I rag on all the movies and I hate watching movies, but it's better when it's with you guys. If yeah. I'm honest, it was. Mm. It could be a little bit of a slog sometimes when we're doing the like free for all bits in the pandemic lockdown, but like now we're back doing what we want to do, doing the marathons. It's more entertaining than ever. It is, yeah. I think we were just choosing movies that we wanted to watch every week. That becomes quite a chore because it's like, how many movies can you like recommend that like you think are actually great? And I mean, there are a lot of movies out there, but like it's, <laughs> sometimes I just want to have things chosen for me. <laughs> yeah, mm, true. And that's why I used to a lot of the time literally just put films on a wheel and let it roll. And just see what came up because I couldn't be bothered to pick myself. Yeah, I, I I've noticed Chris do that before, especially when um I was still working in retail and he'd be like, "Oh, Ross has got to go to bed early, so I'm just gonna put on a film at random and he'll see what film he likes and then he'll like 
choose from there. Even though I used to hate that because I used to wake up and all I'd hear is like, he'd watch like um Spanish films and shit while I was asleep, and then all I'd hear is the same word repeated over and over uh, again. That was when I watched El Topo, the <laughs> Hodorowski movie. And that was also fan. when I watched um, the film Walkabout and you were trying to sleep and all you could hear was didgeridoos because that's all the soundtrack <laughs> is. <laughs> didgeridoos? Yeah, because it's like set in the Australian outback. So all the music is just like didgeridoos. It was and keeping like Australian me up. Sounds. I turn around and I'll be like, can you stop that? <laughs> <laughs> nice. Well, little self-congratulatory thing, but... Well, well done to us anyway, honestly. We've got yeah. to acknowledge it, you know. We missed a couple of weeks, but what can you do? Yeah, we've been mostly consistent. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's about the most consistent thing in my life at the moment. So, <laughs> very happy to keep it going. Aww. As long as we're not all bored shitless by it. All miserable. Yeah. We were this week, though, weren't we, boys? <laughs> no, I enjoyed no? most of it. <laughs> oh, no, we weren't. No, we won't. <laughs> okay, just me and Max then. Mm, well, it's a mixed bag, I'll say. I'll say it's a mixed bag. But before we get into that, mm. I have uh, a couple of things I want to talk about. Yeah. It was announced recently, and maybe you guys don't care, but <laughs> I care because I like the show. Um, but it was announced that Russell T. Davies is coming back as the Doctor Who showrunner. I'm hyped, man. Yeah. The last two seasons of this show absolutely sucked and it's it's chris chibnall he's at it he's he's a terrible showrunner i'm sorry but i think he's writing it as well and like even the stuff that he doesn't write sucks it's just so boring i honestly like contemplated not carrying on with the show because like i mean the next season is going to be him but then the season after that i feel is going to be russell t davis and the shame of it is is that uh, Jodie Foster is playing the Doctor at the moment. I love Jodie Foster. As an actor, she's fantastic. She has not been given the right material to actually let her... Do you mean Jodie Whittaker? Jodie Whittaker, fuck's sake. I'm so sorry. Yes, Jodie Whittaker, I'm sorry. <laughs> yes. I, was, I was waiting for she Chris to not... just let you carry on. Like, Who the fuck it's because I was... Foster? <laughs> Woman from Silence of the Lambs. Silence of the Lambs, yeah, shit. Yeah. Sorry. She, she's good too. I was like, <laughs> yeah, she's all right. <laughs> she's I don't really watch Doctor Who, so I completely forgot the name. So I was like, wait a second, uh, Jodie yeah. Foster isn't yeah. right. And I was like racking my brain trying to work out how it works. <laughs> oh, oh you, were just, you were just waiting. You're like, ah, fuck. Jodie Whittaker, she is a bloody fantastic actor. <laughs> she is really good. But she is not the best in this role, I feel, but it's mostly because of the rising that lets her down. And it's because she's been written by fucking Chris Chibnall. He sucks, man. I don't like him. He's ruined my my one of my favorite shows, you know? And I didn't think the show was, like, amazing beforehand. Like, it, w- it was fine. It kind of petered out, honestly. And this was, like, th- this was, like, such a s- steep decline. I honestly, like, had no idea what to think. And then that last season, was actually like like abysmal, but like absolutely terrible. So I think what's going to happen is that Jodie Whittaker is going to leave when Chris Chibnall leaves. That sucks. That's a shame because I think she could really be good. That's just what's going to happen, though. I feel. Um, but I am excited for Russell T Davies to come back. He did some of like the best runs of the show. I feel back in the yeah. early days of like. The new run with uh, Eccleston and Tennant. Yeah, that was when I used to watch it. I kind of, after um, David Tennant left, I stopped watching it. But like, even s- still to this day, I really love those first at least two or three seasons. The show, like, I rewatched the first, I think, three or four, maybe a little bit more, a few years ago, and I really, really enjoyed it. I did. Um, I I was never really a fan of Matt Smith, which was kind of what put me off the show. But I got back into it when Peter Capaldi was on it, and I think he was fantastic as the Doctor. But a lot of his episodes were really rough, and that was why yeah. I didn't really watch it after that. Um, so I'd be interested to see where the show goes now with Russell T Davis back. I'm hoping they have a good writing team behind him because, like, even if he is a great showrunner, if they don't have a good team then the show will still kind of suffer so it should be interesting to see what happens yeah 
even like those like worst episodes with Capaldi, he's such an an electric actor. He could make even like the worst shit really good. He's just such a fantastic performer. He's one of the greats. Um, yeah, I don't know. I'm cautiously optimistic. Cautiously optimistic. I don't know if it's going to be like a return to form or like even if I would want it to go back to the way it was before because it's not like I don't know if that would fit in how we're currently living or like in just society like we've advanced a lot since those early who episodes and yeah I don't know I think you'll, I'm cautiously optimistic you know I don't know who I would want to be the next doctor but I honestly don't know like I kind of don't care to be honest because it's like it's all down really to the writing we've seen yeah unless you get someone that's just like insanely fantastic I don't know I was actually Olivia saying, Coleman, we could do it. yeah, she Aww. would be amazing. Oh yeah. I was saying to Darcy, um, like this morning, actually, that I've heard rumours that Richard Iowardi might be in talks to do it. Oh fuck, that would be <laughs> great. <laughs> I, I saw would that love face. That. that would be that was... so good. <laughs> It'd be interesting for sure. I think I would consider mm. watching it again. It wouldn't be the, I don't know, it wouldn't be the deciding factor. I think someone would have to watch it for me and then go, no, Darcy, this is worth watching. I'll go, okay, then. Yeah. You could do it. I trust I'd do like it. to see it. Do it for Russell T. Davis. He wrote um, It's a Sin and you love that. Oh, my God. Yeah. One of the best TV shows that I've seen in a long fucking time. There we go. I but haven't I seen just... that yet. <laughs> oh, it is. I might have to give it a watch. Good. Ah, yeah, I like the Pet Shop Boys song, so why not? Um, I actually hate the Pet Shop Boys, and that song plays a couple times in that show. <laughs> plays and it. I just pretend it's the entire score. It's the entire. I just show. pretend. <laughs> I just pretend it's not happening. <laughs> I just, I just pretend it's not there. That's the only song I like by him. Oh, I can't fucking stand them. I know you can't stand. Honest them, to God, but I like that song. It actually infuriates me that they exist. Ah. Oh. They're all right. No. <laughs> no. But I have to respect them, and I do respect them. I just um, hate them. But yeah, I'll definitely give it a chance when he's joined, because I, I loved Doctor Who as a kid. Like Even like David Tennant and Christopher Eccleston like, passed out. I loved the, the really, really old stuff, like yeah. with Tom Baker and... Um, William Hart and all that sort of stuff, like the really old, really cheesy stuff. I loved that growing up, so I have a lot of love for the series, so I definitely do want to go back to it. I watched it yeah. for a little while when Eccleston was on it, and um, the other one, Tennant, because my my mum's like in love with it, so we used to watch it all the time. But then after that, it kind of, yeah, kind of teetered off a little bit, because I was like, ugh, Matt Smith. I'm sorry, I don't like him either. No. Nah. <laughs> See, I, I like all these uh, new doctors. I really do. I like all of them. Um, it's just, I even like Jodie Whittaker when she's able to do stuff that actually reflects how good a performer she is. I would, yeah, I kind of feel like I've, I've really tried to start the, um, the, the very, at the very beginning with Hartnell. Oh, those episodes are really boring. Oh, they're so Yeah, dull. they are really boring. <laughs> hey, sorry? The very, like the very first Doctor Oh, the very beginning. Oh, the, okay. Like 1962, whenever it was it started. Oh, okay. Yeah, uh, i got to watch like some of like the key episodes from the classic Who, I think. Yeah, that's, I that's do think... To do. I do think a lot of them have aged quite badly and they are a little bit boring like compared to the newer run of the show. They're like quite yeah. different. Um, but there's still some really good stories in there. Yeah, I'm actually kind of sick of the Daleks. I fucking hate the Daleks now. Because <laughs> they yeah. have to use them at least once every season to retain the rights. And I'm oh, like, really? I oh. wish there was one season where um, they, they kind of didn't use them at all and they just showed a Dalek for like half a second and then they just left. And I that guess was that, yeah, like, I guess that yes, works. Yes, we've retained so the wish, rights. Yes. I wish that we kind of do that. <laughs> yeah. Bring them back in like 10 years. So I'm just watching Chris become like a rum connoisseur for a couple of seconds. Looking at the colour of it. <laughs> oh, little swirling around. 
Yeah, he's going to, like, yeah. um, wine test it. Yeah, it'll, it'll smell. <laughs> yeah. Have a right. sip and spit it somewhere. Yeah, talk about the hints and notes. Ah, oh, hint of mahogany. <laughs> Delicious. Note of... Brown. Mm. I don't actually know what rum even is. It's an alcohol. So oh, yeah. <laughs> It's an alcohol made of sugar. Ah. Oh, bloody uh, I saw the new James Bond movie. You did. I saw it. There's no time to die. Um, I don't know how big you guys are on Bond. I quite like Bond. Um, uh, yeah. I, I, I don't know. I don't really like or dislike it. Yeah. I've enjoyed some of the films. I used to like You Only Live um, Once and Goldfinger a lot as a kid. Uh, yeah. This is the kind of thing that makes me think that I might be adopted because everyone in my family loves James Bond and I can't stand it. I mean, <laughs> I'm starting to feel quite awkward now because I'm like, oh, I hate everything. Like, why do I hate everything? I don't mean to. It's just everything we talk about I seem to hate. I actually wouldn't like be mad if anyone said that they didn't like Bond. Like, what, it, it, yeah, there's a lot not to like about it, you know? But like, I'm thinking mainly like, you look at those earlier movies, they're pretty dicey. Pretty dicey, pretty hard and fast with, like, they're also a quite lot slow. of racism. So, I said they also can be quite slow. They can oh, be I'm very just, slow. It's just not really my... You know, like, people have, like, genres that they like. I just don't think spy action is really me. I'm not really... Yeah. Like, I get why people like it, actually, because it, it's probably quite pleasing, but I just don't care. I mean, I considered watching this because Rami Malek's in it and he's a beautiful man. And that... was that lady from um, Blade Runner's Anna in it? Anna And she's, like, the hottest woman in the world. So, mm. like, what the fuck? <laughs> but no, it's yeah. not enough. It's not enough for me to have hot people in a film. It's enough for me. <laughs> um, as we'll get into later. Ooh. But... I think um, a lot of these Bond movies suffer, and especially like the earlier ones. I was going through like Sean Connery's run. I haven't finished it yet, but there are some pretty horrendous displays of both sexism and racism in those movies. Mm, I just yeah. really, especially I sexism, got to it. Yeah, yeah, and that kind uh, of something yeah. that permeates throughout just the series as a whole. I feel is sexism. I don't know, but like I know that. They are no longer racist with Bond, but they are kind of sexist with Bond. Yeah, he's still like a ladies' man. Yeah. Mm, I mean, that's. I mean, I'm not excusing it, but with James Bond, I feel like maybe it's just me, but I'm just kind of used to it now. I'm like, oh, there he goes again, doing that thing he's been doing. (laughs) Isn't like the opening of Skyfall as he like gets like he fakes his own death and like you see him just like sleeping with a random stranger I thought you were going to say he fakes his death so he didn't have to see a random stranger that that sounds about right (laughs) sounds like the kind of thing James Bond would do Um, (laughs) yeah so I was very surprised with No Time to Die when none of that really came up nice there's not really he's not really a ladies man he's got like one is Leia Seydu who he's in love with who was in the uh, the previous one, Spectre, who's kind of built up a relationship with her. And this is kind of all about, um, like, his own struggles and, like, who he kind of actually goes through relatable hardships this time around, which I found very refreshing. He's, like, coping with being part of a family, trying to keep them safe. It's not He's not really playing into the ladies' man type of thing, which I feel like is more a sign of the times now where they're like, yeah, we probably have to reel back on this we this is not what people want to see anymore absolutely not so i appreciated that a lot um and and just like the the this they don't really do (laughs) wonders with like female characters in these movies but with this one they actually tried so they've actually got like really strong female performances i just appreciate that so much now for coming from like this series who's like yeah, that's basically its identity, but then it kind of flips it on its head and it's like, yeah, we don't need that in a James Bond movie anymore and it can still be good. No Time to Die, best Bond movie. Best James Bond movie I've ever seen. I saw this in the cinema 
with Connor and in Greece with me. I just feel like it was just so, and they got like a different director this time. I don't know. I think Sam Mendes did the um the last two. They did Skyfall and Spectre, um, and they're, they're decent, decent movies. Um, God, now I have to like remember who uh directed No Time to Die. It's, um, Kari Joji Fukunaga, who yes. um directed the film Beasts of No Nation, and he also directed the first season of true detective which is like one of the best seasons of any tv show right so there we go oh well he directed this film really yeah oh okay yeah. i haven't seen true detective but beast of no nation was very good really watch good. i'd recommend the first season of true detective and i wouldn't recommend any other season <laughs> i knew yeah. you were gonna say like and just luckily stop. it's an anthology <laughs> show so every season's different so you don't have to watch it all I yeah. appreciate that. Yeah, I've heard that. I've heard like the first season is like basically a mini series. You don't need to watch the rest. Yeah. Um, this movie is like three hours long, so, and it kind of maybe that could be a detriment at times, um, but most of the time I was very engaged. I didn't really feel the runtime. It wasted very little time, and I always complain in a Bond movie like I can never follow the plot. This is Plots are so boring and convoluted. Like, I'm only there to see Daniel Craig being James Bond because he's awesome. He's really good in the role, but I don't think he likes doing it. Um, but it doesn't show because he's just such an eclectic actor. He's really good. Um, and I'm excited to see him in, like, different roles that kind of showcase how he can do different well, things. He's given up now, hasn't he? Is that right? Yeah, he's given up. Yeah. Last the last movie. <laughs> <laughs> he gave yeah. up. He's been on it for like fifteen years. <laughs> no, I know it's been a long time, but I was just um making sure that he was leaving. Does that make sense? I'm not honestly a big fan of Daniel Craig, although mm-hmm. I do love him in Knives Out. I'm excited for his the new Knives Out movie that he stars in. Um, yeah, sure. I, yeah, that that was like the movie that made me go. Maybe maybe there's something here. I really really like him. Uh, I think perhaps this movie is not for you if you don't already like Bond because it kind of stays in line with the same kind of Bond and that kind of we've seen for throughout, but it kind of elevates that. It's got like really good cinematography, super engaging fight choreography, action set pieces. You know, there's like a one shot in this movie that kind of goes like, James Bond is like running up the stairs, he's killing bad guys, and it's like just this one shot that follows him up the stairs and like stays still at points and launches up the stairs. And the fight fighting is <laughs> brutal. He like he murders a guy with like a watch and he like bursts his eyeball open. Yeah, it's crazy. It's not like the kind of I was kind of going into it thinking like, yeah, maybe it'll be all right. Um I like the Bond movie, so I was kind of expecting it to be in the same vein as like Skyfall or Spectre, which weren't like amazing, but they were all right. But it's just yeah. like, yeah, I go here for Dan- Daniel Craig, basically. That's all I'm basically here for. Daniel Craig and the fights, absolutely. Um, but they were so good, man. And Darcy mentioned Anna de Armas. Yeah, she's in this. She's really good, mm. but she's in it for about a couple of scenes. She's not really in it for. That is so disappointing. For, for as long as I thought she was going to be in it, I'm like, the entire time I'm like. And she's such a fantastic actor too. I'm like, where, where is Anna de Armas going to show up? And she shows up maybe like halfway through. Was that the in. same for Rami Malek? Well, Rami Malek is like the central villain. So oh, he's in it yeah. quite a bit, but perhaps not as much as I would have liked. Mm. Um, but he's really good. He's really good in the role. And Okay, I don't think this movie is, like, perfect. And I think a lot of that's to do with, like, it is kind of going for the same kind of antics as the general Bond fair. And as a villain, perhaps he plays the best one that we've seen uh, so far. I'm, not, I'm saying that because, like, I can't remember any of the other Bond villains apart from, like, Mads Mikkelsen in Casino Royale, who is really bloody good. <laughs> yeah, Mads yeah. is probably the best one. Remy Malik, <laughs> yeah, maybe true. second. It's, like... It's not a relatable crisis that they're in. It's like, oh fuck, what is the crisis? They're like, 
they've got a machine that like poisons people basically and if you get the, it's like a weapon that like infects people's blood and if you like interact with people who have had this weapons effects on them like you're basically dead because your blood's poisoned so it's not like it's not super intriguing but it, it holds the plot well enough and it kind of takes it in a direction i kind of was and wasn't expecting i'm not going to spoil it um but it was very um because i've never seen like the end of any like bond run before i've never seen like the end of i don't know sean connery's run i've never seen the end of um uh to be the dalton or uh whoever the fuck plays the other bond <laughs> bonds um so at the, at the same time as i was like kind of shocked to see what happened at the end i was also like yeah that makes sense hmm. i don't know if i have like so much more to say on it honestly um as far as I, i'm aware normally the like the last um films and everyone's bond run don't like feel like a conclusion at least from what uh, i've seen this was definitely conclusive and i'll say that <laughs> but i won't reveal anything else mm-hmm. what would you cool. rate it max Ooh, if I were to rate it, I would probably give it an 8 out of 10, honestly. Um, quite high. I just, yeah, I never really felt the runtime. I was just, like, stunned, honestly. It was like, if this looks so good, I'm so into it. The performances are really good. Everyone is having a great time. And I'm having a great time. It's just a great experience overall. And the theatre was, like, packed. I had to, like, just, like, I was scrolling for ages to get, like, a, a seat. That actually, because I went for Connor, I was like, where are two seats together? We can't even. So we had to go at like half nine, I think. But it was worth it. It was like a swan song. It was like, yeah, Daniel Craig's been doing this for 15 years, been uh, one of cinema's most recognizable heroes. And this movie just outdoes all that came before it. So, really big props to them. Couldn't have asked yeah. so. Nice. I might watch it at some point. If I do watch it, I'll, I won't see it in the cinema. I don't think I'll just wait till um, it goes on to Prime because Amazon bought MGM not that long ago, so now they have the rights to every James Bond film. And I think either late this year or early next year, they're all meant to go on Prime, including No Time to Die. Oh, I'm, te- I'm telling you, Amazon Prime is literally becoming Disney, just owning everything left, right, yeah, and centre. No, ridiculous. <laughs> Lovely. Okay, that's well, all I had to talk about. Yeah, where do we begin now? Now we're going to go on to a movie. So, okay, we watch the Scooby Doo movies, um, but I right. kind of wanted to break it up with something that was actually going to be really good because I felt like this was going to be an absolute mm-hmm. slog to get through. So, hell yeah, I got a Blu-ray of a movie that I watched. I think I discussed on the podcast. Um, yeah, you did a few episodes ago. Um, Maybe not as in-depth as I would have liked, but this time I thought uh, just everybody would have a really good time with it. And it is the movie Nobody, and it's from this year. It's directed by uh, Ilya Naishula, and it's an action movie. It's about this guy who's um, he's like a stay-at-home... No, he's not. He's like a, like a dad. He does all the dad stuff, and he lives in a suburban neighbourhood. Can't take the trash out on time. His wife doesn't love him, really. His kids are kind of like what's so so about him he's trying to buy this um metalworks factory or whatever but he has a hidden past he's like a we don't really know what he was but he was something to do with like military stuff uh he served some he said he, he did some like like army things so we led to believe and um one night uh they get robbed these two people come in like give me a stuff man so it's like fine here's the stuff so he like he's like all i have is like a couple of crumpled one dollar bills man just take it and leave me and my family alone and then his son's got like the uh, robber on the floor and he's like dad i kind of took him why didn't you let me take him he's like shut up son i'm your dad yeah so and then um it's basically <laughs> <laughs> what kicks this all off is that um the next day he finds out that his uh his young daughter can't find a kitty cat bracelet <laughs> and he and he's like that fucking tears it so he goes out and he tries to find the kitty cat bracelet and he will he will fuck up anyone who gets in his way 
and it's fucking awesome. What do we think yeah, of Nobody? Fucking sick. It was great. <laughs> yes. I am... Um... I haven't seen the director's previous movie, Hardcore Henry, but it's been a film I've wanted to see for ages. Um, You'd probably watch it so, now, wouldn't you? Good. Yeah, I mm. definitely would watch it now. But I, um, yeah, I didn't expect to enjoy it as much as I actually did. I thought it would be, I knew it would be entertaining, but I didn't expect it to be like as well done and exciting and fun as it is. And I think a lot of that actually comes down to um, the casting of, Bob Odenkirk in the lead role. Um, not to say I don't think Bob Odenkirk is a good actor, because I think he's a fantastic actor. Like He's really great in Breaking Bad, and um, he's incredible in Better Call Saul, the spin-off show, um, which he stars in. But he's, like, he's mostly like a comedic actor. He comes from a comedy background. So to see him like basically like buff up for this action role considering he's like in his 50s I think almost in his 60s is like ridiculous and he really really pulled it off yeah props to him I actually think this film was so sick to be honest I actually didn't know what to think about it because I knew nothing about it other than the fact that he was in it yeah I, did, I didn't have a clue I didn't know the plot or anything no I didn't even look it up because I actually thought I was never gonna see it not because I didn't want to see it but because it never came up I know yeah. I'd see it eventually but I wanted it all to be a surprise Oh, it was great. I like to do that a lot now. I don't look up plots or watch the trailers for films. I like to just go in completely blind. Oh, I I loved it. Mm. It has not been bigged up enough, in my opinion. Not enough no. people talking about this. I only went to see it. Like I heard like a couple of people talking about it in like a, a movie podcast. Um, but I just think this is like probably one of the best action movies in recent years. We kind of compare it to John Wick, but it's a lot better than John Wick. It's just this yeah. guy going around just br- brutally like hurting people. And did you say it came out this year? Yes. Yeah. When did it come out? I don't This year. Yeah. A few months ago. Few months oh, wow. Ago. I did, yeah, I didn't even know. Wow. Yeah, I, I went into the cinema. Fuck. I was like, this is going to be something. I uh, didn't oh. really know what it was what it was going to be. A bunch of old people sitting around. Am like, I in the right theatre? I don't know. Why are a bunch of old people sitting there? Um, <laughs> they they want to have fun too. They do, yeah. I hope they did. Cause this did was they look like they're having a good sick. time? Oh, I don't know. I was just engrossed in the movie. I didn't <laughs> give a fuck about what anybody else was thinking. <laughs> like, no, of course not. I'm not no, this was just so much fun. It's just so much yeah. fun. Mm, and did you say he comes from like a comedy background? I get that. I definitely get that. This movie is really funny, honestly. It, it is. Plays it's funny like, as fuck. The when they can. This is like, this whole like crux of like it hanging on the balance of like, where is the kitty cat bracelet? <laughs> it's like even, he's like, Pat fucking tears it. And he goes off to like this, this place. He tries to find the, uh, the robbers and he actually finds them. And then he, he goes into the house and, and he's just like, he punches the dude in the, in the head with a gun. He's like, where's the kitty cat bracelet, motherfucker? <laughs> and it's so funny, man. And it's, ah, oh, dude, I love this movie. I don't know why, I don't know why I found that bit so funny, but I was like, oh, wow. It's Imagine that. Like the, just the sheer ridiculous of that line. <laughs> but like, this is a film that is very self-aware. It like, knows exactly what it is and doesn't try to be anything else. It reminds me a little bit of like Malignant in that way, where it, yeah. it just wants to be a fun, like, fun movie. It doesn't try to be ultra-serious or anything. And it is good. Bloody good. We were like, howling with laughter at night. Just certain things. There's like a whole thing with like the lasagna. He's like, I'm making. He's trying to be like a better dad and a better uh, father. No, husband. So he like goes home. He's like, oh well, why don't I make my uh, lasagna like I used to make? But we're all just <laughs> like, we're like howling. We're like in tears because like he made the lasagna, and then they're like having lasagna at the table, and they keep saying lasagna. And then, and then Darcy's like the lasagna. I'm like, wait, <laughs> wait. What? I think that's what made it funnier for me. Was just I said lasagna, and then everyone just started joking about lasagna like, yeah, for the, the rest lasagna. of the film. Yeah. And then like the house gets raided in this super incredible fight scene with like this house raid with people coming in with guns, and he's like, I'll I'll take care of this. So he puts his family in the 
in the basement, lock them up, and he's like, he just kills everyone there. No, he doesn't kill them even. He like, he just well, beats them up within an inch are, of their life. They? He For kills sure. like half of them, and yeah, then half of them he leaves yeah. like just knocked out. So then he sets them all up on a sofa and like just tells them all his backstory. <laughs> and then <laughs> that was great. What? And then he just he sets the last the place one on surviving kills himself to avoid hearing the story. <laughs> I like that. That that was that's what made it funny. Like it was just parts of that was like, that's gold. Yeah, because there's like a recurring joke there. He's like he's trying to explain his backstory and who he is, but every time he does it, the person he's talking to dies. Oh, like um, Pavel, what's his name? The one who got Pavel, um yeah. hit by the car, and he goes, "Who are you?" And then he's telling this story, and he's just like dead. And he goes, "Oh." For <laughs> yeah. so that house, it the the raid at the house. We were like. That Lazaga is ruined. Yeah, well, he like, shot his face into yeah, it. He slammed someone's face into it at yeah. one point. Died a tasty it's death, ruined. though. That it, it looked amazing. Did it not? <laughs> what a shame. Yeah. yeah. Tell me you wouldn't eat it. No one even got to eat it. That was what made me even more annoyed, though. He yeah, made no. this Lazaga. No one yeah. ate it. And no one got the, the time. Guy who did it. He's like, you came to my house, which you know you don't fucking do. And I'm like, yeah. You ruined his lasagna night. <laughs> so true. I love all of the the action choreography and all of the action sequences just generally. I think they're all incredibly well directed and choreographed. It's some of the like best action I've seen in a film maybe ever. It's like really, really great stuff. It reminds me, like you said, of John Wick in just how like brutal a lot of it can be and how um like well choreographed and everything it is. I've never seen it, but it sounds like it could be quite fun. The John Wick films are a lot of fun. John Wick is really I definitely cool. think this is more fun. This is better than John yeah. Wick, in my opinion. But it's mostly like okay, so John Wick is directed by Chad Stahelski and he was like a he's a fight choreographer. He knows yeah. his shit. So when you go into a John Wick movie, you know, you're going to see some epic fights, and you do. And this, I don't know, no Shula's background, um, but I don't really care because like the fights are fucking amazing. There's like um, like a bus scene where like he's on the bus, and these drunk guys get on the bus, and he's like. Ah oh, damn! And then like he tells everyone to get off, and he like he just like takes the keys off the bus driver, and then he, he just like stands at the front of the bus. There's these like drunken people are there. They're like annoying everyone, and they're like, "Oh, what do you think you're doing?" And he's like, "I'm gonna fuck you up," and then he does, and it's awesome. And he gets hit a lot. He fucking goes down so much. He's not infallible. He's not like Superman. He's just yeah. a dude, yeah. honestly. It was like um, I kind of got like One Punch Man vibes from him. He's like, I'm just a guy who's a hero for fun, and then he just like beats all these people up, <laughs> and he's like getting stabbed, and then he ah, oh, he like <laughs> he like decks a guy, and then like he's choking, so he has to like cut his throat open and push a straw into his throat <laughs> just <laughs> so he doesn't great. die. It's so cool. It is so cool. That was disgusting. It's actually funny we bring up John Wick because I was just reading up the screenwriter of the film actually wrote all three John Wick movies. That makes Ah. sense. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. It's good writing. It is. It's really good writing. It is really good writing. Yeah, it's actually a shame that it's not as popular as it as I thought it would be. I feel like this is a film that's going to um, grow a cult following. Yeah. It just kind of feels like that sort of film that mm. I think as soon as this goes on to like Netflix or something, people are going to watch it and it's just going to be shared everywhere and everyone's going to be watching it and talking about it. Because yeah. it is like a really accessible action movie that's really funny. Everything's like really well done. So I think people who just go into films just hoping for you know, some exciting action will get a lot out of it. Yeah, it's like an hour and a half, it doesn't waste any time. Even like yeah. with, so the guy's called Hutch, played by Bob yeah. Odenkirk, and they're like introducing his character, they do that within like five minutes, just showing this montage of him going through his day to day. It's like Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and it just goes through it so quickly, and you're like, yeah, yeah. this dude is like, he's just 
repeating the same day over and over and over again. It's like a, it's so, so insanely relatable. You know, you're like, yeah. oh yeah, I, mm. I understand this guy. It's a they very like anymore. Edgar Wright esque opening. I think reminds me a lot of his style, like the quick cuts and like the over the top sound effects and stuff. Yeah, yeah the, the, like Shaun of the Dead was the first one that came into mind, but I'm not really like. I was, I was really thinking, thinking more that. of like um a lot of the like cuts and in like hot fuzz how like they make the most simplest things like feel like a action montage that's kind of what they do in the intro like you got him rushing to get the bins out and messing it him like scanning his card on the bus like all these different things that they like extreme close ups on and like fast cuts like almost like they would with the action scenes yeah, I feel like it was meant to be a chore, but it was actually fun to watch, which is really weird. Yeah, it exactly. no, doesn't waste any time whatsoever, and you understand his character immediately. It's like uh, he's just a dad; he's trying his best. He's going through day to day, repeating the same shit, missing trash collection. <laughs> now, oh, don't you just want to go ape shit though? Don't you just want to just kill a bunch of people? And he does. He does. Yeah. <laughs> Great soundtrack, really good use of music. A lot of great songs in this movie. Yeah. Um, but oh, I have to Google what the soundtrack is now. Yeah, I was actually um, I was walking through Tesco's earlier, and um, one of the one of the, it was like one of those you know like one of those like really famous songs. And for some weird reason, I was just thinking back to you know like the the fight scenes where they just have like a classical like piece of music playing and it's just like chaos and it's just like this calm like cool music it's just like what the fuck yeah there's there's a bit that in particular like really stuck out where i was like this is fucking awesome it's like the scene where there's like a big car chase where he's like Bob Odenkirk's character's being shot at and heartbreaking <laughs> by Pat Benatar's playing. Oh, oh yeah. And I was like, this is so good. <laughs> so fucking good, yeah. I've Gotta Be Me by Steve Lawrence. That's oh, yeah, that was fucking um, sick. Burning all the money. Yeah. Oh, so good, so good. Tchaikov- Even though they get, like, Tchaikovsky in there, it's so good. Um, One thing I complained about on my initial viewing was that I didn't really care much for the villain. He's just like he's Russian. He's controls oh, the, Russian, the Russian mafia. I st- it still kind of gets to me. I'm not gonna lie because it's quite like whatever. It's like this has been done a million times before. Um, it annoys me less this time. I kind of I do quite like the villain, but he's kind of just there to yeah, move just, the plot along. Yeah, you just kind of felt like a goofy villain, but not really like I don't know, just whatever really. I just didn't really care because I I just really liked the film, so I was just kind of like willing to see past it, to be honest. It was like, oh, he's doing karaoke. Ha, 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 lols. I was just like, okay. Yeah. One of my f- um, like, favourite lines in the film is um, it comes from when he, um, that villain just, it's at his club, he finds out like his brother's been put in the hospital and he just randomly like kills this, this stranger in this club. And like... Um, one of his business partners was was like, do you know who got that guy was? He owns a 15% stock in our company. That means his shares are now ours or something like that. <laughs> that bit was really what funny. What the fuck? <laughs> oh, my yeah. God. There's that great moment where, like, his brother has been beat to shit by, um... Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, fuck. Hutch. Yeah. And he, like, goes into the hospital to see him. And like he goes into like where his goons are, and he like picks up a chair on his way there, and you're like, why did he just pick up that chair? And then it cuts to like this guy who's been beating through shit, just lying in a hospital bed, bandaged up, and then all it is is just this chair being thrown at him. It's it hilarious. Is, that is so funny. And then he picks up and then keeps hitting him that was with one it. Of the funniest bits. I love that. It kind of caught me off guard. I'm not gonna lie. I was like, what the fuck. Yeah, just like a shot of him in bed and suddenly a chair flies at him. It's so good. So funny. Yeah. Funniest part of it was just like any time like a kitty cat bracelet was referenced. Yeah. <laughs> it's so good. Yeah, I don't know why we found that so, so funny, but... Because it is funny, man. It is. It's like, this is what the entire <laughs> movie hinges on. This is guy I'm trying kitty... to find. Like, he wouldn't have gone out uh, if not for the uh, kitty cat bracelet. He wouldn't have beaten those guys up on the bus. 
if not for the kitty cat bracelet, because he was out what, anyway. Yeah, what was great like, about that it. was just, he's just like, oh, that sneaky devil, and the kitty cat bracelet's just like underneath the sofa like the whole yeah. time. <laughs> As he's about to burn the house to the ground, it's just like there, and he's like, this didn't need to happen at all. <laughs> Like where he oh. just takes it and goes, I'm just gonna burn the house down anyway. And I'm like, good on you, mate. Yeah, it sets the vinyl on fire. Sick. I love yeah, it. That was really cool. Yeah, it looked cool. I do love the casting in the film. Not just Bob Odenkirk, who is incredible in the movie, and I do think it's like a really a really smart casting choice to pick someone who's like doesn't have an action background at all and like getting him to deliver this incredible like action like like stunt work and choreography because he did a lot of it himself actually oh, yeah. but um you also got like um christopher lloyd plays his dad who yeah. towards the end of the movie is like like just shooting everyone he's bad that was really cool like to see this like <clears throat> 80 year old man just like getting to be in this action movie and you've also got um rizza from wu-tang clan who plays his brother who's also really great in the movie yeah he's so good He's basically just a voice the entire time until he comes in at the end. But he was really, yeah, really good performance from literally everyone involved. Like, I just feel like this is like a really good step in the right direction for action. Because I'm just like, I'm so bored of modern action movies where it's just, they don't really pay attention to the fight choreography. It's more about like big explosions and just, I think back to like when I saw Fast and Furious 9, I'm just so fucking bored of that movie. And that was like the only Fast and Furious movie I've seen. But Christ, like, look what you could have been doing. This is just like, this is a step up thing. I'm very excited to see whatever Ilya Nyshiller does next. Because I think he's, he's onto something. Yeah, I'm definitely going to watch Hardcore Henry soon. I'm really excited to watch it. I also just found out he did um, the music video for the weekend song False Alarm. Which is like a first person like action movie in like five minutes. And it's a really great video as well. Mm, very nice. That's about all I have to say. On the yeah. old uh, nobody. Darcy just got up and walked away, so I guess she's given up on the podcast. Apologies. I just needed a cough and a wee at the same time and yeah. Ratings. <laughs> right, okay, yeah. cool. Can we rate it one. out of Lazagas, please? Oh, of course we're going to rate it out of Lazagas. <laughs> yeah, it was either Lazagas or Kitty Cat Bracelets. Yeah. Yeah, this is a really, really great movie. I didn't expect to love it as much as I did, but I'm glad I watched it. I'll definitely get it on Blu-ray at some point, and I'm definitely going to check out Hardcore Henry at some point. Cool. So, yeah, I give it nine Lazagas out of ten. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. Um, I really enjoyed this as an experience in the cinema. Um, and to be honest, I enjoyed it more um, just sitting around with friends uh, having a really good time. That Everyone was enjoying it. Um, it was just having the time of my life. So I would also give it a nine Lazagas out of ten. So I... Rock. <laughs> what, what did you say? But this film fucking rocks. That's what I thought you said, but I was just making sure because I was moving my uh, hair at the time and I couldn't hear it. Um, anyway, um, for me, we all know that, um, for uh, for me mostly, uh, w- what I like about a film is how entertained I was. And to be honest, this film ticked every single box for me and more. So um, to cut it short, uh, 10 Nazagas. Nice. Mm. High praise from me. Mm. Speaking about 10 out of 10 movies, we did a marathon. I do apologise for that. Uh, my microphone was not plugged in and I only now just realised it. Oh, <laughs> fuck's sake. Well, sorry about that. <laughs> I have to use my uh, laptop audio for that one, uh, but now we're, we're back in the game. Yeah, just in time for the cursed movie. Just in time. For some great movies that we watched. Take it away, Chris. Yeah, so we watched three Scooby-Doo movies. We watched Scooby-Doo, Scooby-Doo 2, Monsters Unleashed, 
and the recent Scoob. <laughs> but let's start off with the OG Scooby Doo from 2002, directed by Raja Gosnell and written by the one and only James Gunn, writer and director of Guardians of the Galaxy and um, The Suicide Squad. <laughs> <laughs> cool. So in the film, it starts off the mystery gang, Mystery Inc. They're doing their, they're solving a case, and they decide to split up after that. They go their separate ways, and two years later, they're all invited to Spooky Island, um, where a guy called Mister Mondavarius, played by Rowan Atkinson, um, basically says there's some strange things going on. These teenagers, they're coming to the island and they're leaving completely changed, brainwashed people. So they have to basically team up, put all their differences beside themselves and um, work out this new mystery. What do we all think of the masterpiece that is Scooby-Doo? In hindsight, it was okay. Yeah. Yeah. It was all right. Yeah, Um, that's it. Yeah, it was all right. I don't know. Um, I expected it to be like shit, but it was actually decent. It was all right. (laughs) Um, I didn't hate it. I also didn't really like it that much. Um, It it kind of hinges on like the performances. I I think the casting is like spot on. They all embody (laughs) the characters so well. I don't know like much about like the OG Scooby Doo cartoon stuff. I've seen a few of them, um, but I mean, from what I can tell from this movie, yeah, they all just <laughs> worked really well together. The dynamics really good. Um, I didn't. I remembered a lot more of this movie than I thought because I had seen it when I was like younger. Um, but it's um, yeah, I don't know if I would say that I liked it. I just I appreciate what it gets right, you know. Mm. Um. <laughs> yeah. In hindsight, it was it was okay. It was it it made us do genuine laughs, which I kind of appreciate yeah. in a marathon with us lot. So that is actually something I'm something I was I liked, really yeah. surprised by because I what because we thought it was funny. No. Yeah, <laughs> I, I was surprised we actually found it genuinely oh, funny. Okay. Okay. Because obviously, I loved this film when I was like really, really young, which is normally as that we've said the before, it's the, that curse. Is the curse. It's a sign that it's not going to be good. But I watched it two or three years ago with a group of people, all of whom were really loving it, really like in tears, laughing at everything. And I remember being sat there just really miserable. And I was like, this fucking sucks. I hate this so much. <laughs> but watching oh, wow. it again with you guys, I was actually like, I was laughing a lot. I was like, this is like actually good. See, I, I was I, really I, surprised. I, th- I think a lot of it as well as well. Um... Obviously, I don't know if you knew it then, but I remember before we watched it, Chris said that it's basically meant to be a parody. So I kind of went into it not taking it too seriously anyway. And I yeah. was like, oh, it's actually quite funny because I it's think fucking that helped, stupid. Because I think when I was watching it last time, I was kind of like, I don't want to fucking watch Scooby Doo. Like it was everyone else was like, yeah, let's watch Scooby Doo. <laughs> that sounds and like I them, really though. didn't want to. So I was just like quite miserable the whole time because I think I went in. Just like, oh, it's just a shit kids movie that I'm not going to enjoy. Whereas this time, knowing that um, basically it was written by James Gunn to be a satire and parody of the actual TV show, I think that kind of helped me enjoy it a bit more. Um, that being said, I don't think, I don't think in a lot of cases, I don't think that's enough to save the movie. I do not think it's an amazing movie. I Oh, no, no one said that. No, I <laughs> enjoy the satirical stuff. I enjoy the bits where it is parodying the TV show. Mm-hmm. But I do think at the same time, it does also copy a lot of what that show, what the original show did badly. And I also think it does a lot of what kids movie of its time do badly as well. Yeah, do you know what? It's, it's a really weird criticism, but I think you guys might agree with me on this one. The thing I hated the most about that movie was the soundtrack of the movie. And I never normally Ooh. say that because I normally don't pay attention to stuff like that. But when every song or every version of a song sounds like a 
uh, pop punk band of the 2000s doing it. It really grates on. I don't know. It grated on me a lot. The soundtrack to all three of these films suck. Yeah, they're bad. <laughs> all three of them are very, very <laughs> like. It's just music of its time. Yeah, and they all have. Well, Scoob obviously is new, so that's not really like mm-hmm. dated yet. But especially oh, the be. first two. It mm. will be very dated, but the first two are very, very, very of its time to the point where I can't imagine a kid nowadays will watch it and get much from the music. Yeah, this, yeah. Is, this well, is you what got, those you things, got, like, though. Simple Plan, who comes in at the beginning, um, and we're like, ah, oh, Simple Plan. We all love Simple <laughs> Plan, right? <laughs> Only Carl no. loves Simple um, Plan, though, and he's like, what? I like that. And we're like, yeah. oh, okay. Um, but then every other song <laughs> that plays after that sounds exactly like that. So we're, like, constantly yeah. just being like, is this Simple Plan? Is this Simple Plan? It's no. Blink-182. Is this Simple Plan? <laughs> <laughs> oh, it sounds a, a lot like them. Or it sounds just like... <laughs> Yeah. And that's just the like a criticism I have, I suppose, of pop mm. punk from the 2000s in general. It's just, it all sounds the same. Also, I didn't fun appreciate fact, the soundtrack. Though, fun fact I found <laughs> out. Um, so there's a bit where um, there is a band performing on the island. And oh, I think yeah, it's, yeah. Um, is it, yeah. It's Daphne, like, looks at the nope. guitarist and he's got, like... Oh, wait, yeah. Yeah, yeah like... The green eyes. Or the, the singer and he's got, like, green yeah, glowing yeah, yeah. eyes. Yeah. So that band's the band Sugar Ray. Right. Sure, it was right, supposed yeah. to be Weezer, but they <gasps> didn't want to do it. Oh my Weezer god! Do you know what they wanted to be in the movie? Do you they said know no. how much better I would have liked that film if Weezer was actually? It like, would have been like... so much better if Rivers <laughs> Cuomo was stood there staring Daphne in the eyes and they were gro- like you know glowing what? green. Yeah. I'm actually disappointed, right? Because I know everyone likes to meme on Weezer, and they're not the best band in the world, right? But if you were thinking that is prime Weezer content, the Scooby Doo movie, and they missed out on that. It Fucking would have shame been on you, Weezer. Just like pure meme material. Yeah, like, oh, mate. Would it have been better though, <laughs> or would it have just been better for us? Because we us, know we had for fun. us. Yeah. <laughs> Not like <laughs> no actually one else. better. It probably would yeah. have been worse, but it would have been fun. Oh, oh yeah, like no, no child of the time would have appreciated that. Like, even, to be fair, if I had watched it back in the day and saw Weezer, I'd been like, who the fuck are they? Yeah. Without the profanity, obviously. <laughs> no, it was like it was trying to be like hot, I guess, because he's like mm. staring at her with like, like, like hot eyes. He's like, oh, <laughs> yeah, you like this music, don't you, baby? And that's like. That's also yes. like a thing with this movie as well, which is quite sexualized. And I didn't it is, remember yeah. it being as sexualized as as it actually is. There's a lot of cleavage in this movie. Yeah. This, is, this movie is for kids. What? Wait, Chris, would you would you like to tell me what you uh, no tell Max what you told me earlier, which is the best thing I've ever heard in my life. So, um, in um America, the MPAA, the ratings board, um, supposedly. At least according to James Gunn, he came out and said this like recently. The film was originally rated R because there was too much cleavage and they had to use <laughs> CGI to cover it up to get oh a PG God. rating. That face that made... Uh, <laughs> yes. Wow. That was the face I made. Um. Well, I don't know what to do with that information. <laughs> um, we didn't like see the CG version though, clearly. There was a lot of cleavage still, wasn't there? Like, I'm not just smoking crack. Yeah, actually, I mean, I'm not complaining, but it is a kid's fair, movie. It, it wouldn't <laughs> surprise me if um, the UK got a different cut, like got the original version, because... We don't care about that kind of thing. We're not getting like, oh, that cleavage. Yeah, no, we cares? don't really care. Kids aren't going to watch it and go, ooh, boobies, because they're kids. Like, no. They don't really know anything about boobies. They just know that they kind of... They, yeah, no. people and with they them. also don't care yeah. about like the jokes that go over their head, like all these jokes oh, like, about like the Shaggy, Shaggy being a stoner, is Shaggy and oh, Scooby smoking God. a bunch of wed. They're like, oh yeah, we're, we're, so there's like funny. they're in the mystery van, and the, like the, the the top of the van is like there's smoke billowing out of it, and we're like, oh, that's a weed joke. I didn't know that when I was a kid because like it just goes into the van, and they're just like cooking like food you're like oh okay they're cooking and it's food. the weird shit that they're making as well it's like proper stoner food where they're like mixing like different like textures and tastes and stuff yeah. fucking yeah. funny but that's, that's good. what's, that what's was good about their, this movie that was their yeah. characters anyway they were, they were like that in the original cartoon yeah oh yeah, yeah but i mean it kind of just emphasizes like 
they were massive stoners. I mean, how does a dog a stoner? But I'm not getting into that. Yeah. So then it makes <laughs> sense that Isla Fisher comes in and she's like, my name is Mary Jane. And Shay says, oh, oh my that's God. like my favorite name. <laughs> of course it is, Shaggy. Of course it is. Wait, what was what was his real name again? North. Shaggy. Norville. <laughs> Norville. <laughs> Norville Rogers. Yeah, yeah. He gets yeah. better and better and every time. Scuba do. Scuba do, yeah. Do. Which, if I'm honest, once we um, once we get to the crux of this marathon, I realised that nothing actually makes any sense because he was never named Scoop Sk- I was gonna say Skirbert then. Skirbert, yeah, he was Scoobert, never named Skirbert. <laughs> he was never called Skirbert. <laughs> um, yeah, fuck hell. <laughs> what a movie! But the, I um, thought the Arla original was bloody good. She was actually really good. She in was this good. Movie. Yeah, <laughs> she was. She I think everyone's good. Yeah. everyone is like so into it. I love uh, it. They're just having fun. That's what I. Yeah. I mean, for all the faults of this film, that's what I like about it is that everyone is just clearly like having a laugh. They're having a joke. They're like, this film's a fucking meme. I think that's what I enjoyed about it so much. It's like mm-hmm. it. I think everyone like involved with it and everyone acting in it, they're just having a good time. It doesn't feel like a just a cynical cash grab kids movie like a lot of these like it's cartoon adapted. Right, Chris, remember it wasn't even meant to do. be a kids movie. Yeah, of course, <laughs> it was originally written as a like a teenage like PG thirteen teen comedy, like satirizing Scooby Doo. But Warner Brothers um, decided to make it a kids movie, just like they did with Kangaroo Jack. Right, what is yeah. it with you and Kangaroo Jack? It's like it's, it's like along every time those you do lines. It. Yeah. yeah. But like either way, it doesn't just feel soulless. Like you can tell that everyone is actually enjoying making the movie. Like compared to something like the Flintstones movies from the 90s with John Goodman in, they um, kind of t- tried to do a similar thing, like adapt like a Hanna-Barbera cartoon into live action. And they just feel like... They feel really soulless and they feel like no one really cared at all and it just feels very, very phoned in. But I didn't get that at all with this first movie at all. Yeah, no. It's weird, you know, because Hanna-Barbera, those cartoons are like my childhood. Like Scooby-Doo, I did watch a bit when I was a child. Mostly like Tom and Jerry, I really liked when I was a kid. Um, It is interesting to see it in a live action format. I'm not going to watch... The new Tom and Jerry movie, though, with like bloody Chloe Grace Moretz, I think that's just going to be trash because it's yeah, not going to be funny. It's is awful. It? It's, it's not going to be funny, and it's not going to be like I kind of I didn't care yeah, much for this movie, movie, but Tom and I, Jerry. Yeah, so I didn't care much for this movie, but I like it more in hindsight. I think because it's just like thinking yeah. it back to it, it's f- funny, just because it's so like balls to the wall weird. You got like this. this this cast who's like so into it it's hard not to get into it you know like they're just playing these okay so these guys okay um mystery inc you got like shaggy velma scooby uh daphne and fred they're like just guys and they solve mysteries but like they're super famous in this one so but like they just leave and they don't get paid. So, like, how are they getting paid? How are they able to do all this shit? And then, well, that was like something that I found like quite weird. I was like, yeah, they're famous, but they aren't getting paid. And then when they break up, in quotation marks, they like like Shaggy rides the mystery van away. Like he took the mystery van. But I always thought the mystery van was like Fred's. That's like his baby. How is he like? okay with that being gone for like a whole like mm. two years yeah that was a bit weird that's a like a long running joke with Scooby Doo just as a whole I think because I've watched like a couple of those um, maybe like even like the newer movies the animated ones um, not Scoop but like the like the cartoon you mean like ones. the 2D ones yeah the 2D ones and like this like this long running joke that Fred is like in a romantic relationship with the mystery van and it just like keeps yeah. getting blown up and he just goes into like fits of tears and rage but that's really funny I like that a lot <laughs> yeah one thing I did like about the film was I think um, a lot of like the creature designs and a lot of the settings are just like 
quite creative and cool. Um, yeah, I just think they really managed to capture like the just like super cartoony yet kind of like dark and gothic look of the show. It's like the perfect sort of like Halloween movie for kids, I think. Whereas like it does feel quite creepy at points. It does have like really capture that like spooky theme while also being like really family friendly and not like scary or anything. Yeah, I think the only way they could have achieved that though was going to that spooky island. Like a look more like a fucking theme park than anything else, didn't it? Yeah, they like get there and then like Velma's watching this show, and 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 like this guy is like trying to put on a performance, and she's like, "Oh well, I can see the projectors there." <laughs> and she, she like ruins the show. Is like, "You're not trying hard enough. I got you. Mystery solved." <laughs> and and the guy's like, "Oh, you got me." It's like he's just trying to put on a performance. Yeah. Why are you trying to be a buzzkill? <laughs> Guy looks a little bit like the singer from Ramstein. Oh my god! Does he? Oh, I don't know. Now I have to Google. What Ramstein. a thought! Why? Why bring that into my brain yeah, now? Ramstein. <laughs> it's just a white guy who's bold, right? Like, yeah. li- li- literally, any it could have been anyone, really, <laughs> couldn't it? Sorry to all those white bold guys, but you all kind of look the same. But he's like buff as well, so he like he just looks inherently angry. So I just think of like Ramstein and that sort of. Are you just are you trying to say that the Germans are inherently angry? Yeah. Can we stop? That's exactly what you're saying, Darcy. Literally, (laughs) literally (laughs) cancelled. There's a joke to be made about the world wars there, but I'm not. Scrappy do. Scrappy Doo. Scrappy Doo is in this movie. Scrappy Doo. We have to talk about Scrappy Doo. He's in this movie. Um, <laughs> of course, yeah. I mean, he's kind of an integral part of this movie. Max if you was think definitely about it. just trying to change the subject. He's, he's he's there and he's like, okay. So Rowan Atkinson comes in. He's like, hello guys. I'm Mr. Bean. I run this uh, spooky island. I'm, and then, that's and what then he said. Like, oh yeah, we've got, so we've got our suspicions who this who the uh, culprit is, 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 is uh, this guy, this guy, or it's you, Mr. Bean. He's like, oh, oh, oh. Uh, and then at the end is revealed, oh, it's, <laughs> 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 it's revealed. The <laughs> Mr. Bean, he opens up and he's a robot, and then Scrappy yeah, Doo's inside. Funny. That, What's the that actually? <laughs> Actually What's got the me? plot to this movie? Okay. There, there is no plot. The plot is not. What does Scrappy do? One, he's like, I'm, I'm gonna Remember, get all these Scrappy- like ghosts. I'm gonna get all the ghost souls and I'm gonna put them in this fucking basin, and then they're gonna swirl around there forever, and then I'm gonna suck the, <laughs> their souls into my Yu-Gi-Oh uh, fucking chess piece, and then like <laughs> the. It gets really big, and he's like, "I'm gonna defeat the world." That's his. That's it's, his motivation. That's it's literally the plot of this movie. Yeah. He's upset at Scooby Doo. It's his the, uncle, isn't it? Mis- he's upset. Yeah, at uncle Mystery Scoo. Inc. screwed him over, and he's upset. They threw him out on the open road, and he and said he wants to take revenge on the entirety. And he's like, of "I've humanity. got puppy power. Yeah. I'm gonna be a big a, he dog." Was, he was a dick, though. He was being a he dick. Was. He deserved he... it. <laughs> yeah, he just randomly pissed on. Daphne. Yeah, that, he was weird. Like, that was weird. <laughs> then so Fred was like, what have I told you about pissing on Daphne? <laughs> to imply that he does it all the time. Yeah. Why did that feel to like a sketch out territory. of like, you know, like in scary movie where they do like the stupid like piss scenes and whatever. Yeah. Why did it come across as like, that was a joke that James Gunn wrote in, shouldn't, should have been cut out to make fan friendly and they went, nah, fuck it. That's funny. I'm going to leave it in. There's a lot of things like that. It's like, um, weird. There's like the bit where um, Fred's soul is taken. He's like replaced by one of the like the demons that kind of like change him to like a really stereotypical fake like hip kid, and he just like yeah. randomly says "biatch." Yeah. Oh yeah, <laughs> like, that's something where it's like, whoa, well, that shouldn't be in. A and I said to this "biatch," why? <laughs> and I'm like, later on, oh, what's what's up, dog and uh, dog. <laughs> <laughs> to be fair, I thought you were going to say about when Fred uh, was going to get his soul back, but he goes into Daphne and he's talking like, oh my God, I got hey. boobies now. And it's like, yeah, it's like, like I can look at myself, myself naked. It's like, yeah, and he God. just like opens up 
her dress to look at the boobs and they walked away. <laughs> yeah, oh my god. They they really like play around with like the gender swapping in this because everyone's like going into each other's bodies. They don't do it like very well. Because they're all just like no. in the in the woods. And then like they're just swapping bodies and like that's the gag. Like, oh they're swapping bodies and a woman is in a man's body and a man is in a woman's body. Ha <laughs> ha. Yeah, it doesn't really go anywhere. It's just kind of throw away, to be honest. Why was the fairground weaponized? You tell me. Literally, it doesn't make any sense. Oh, yes, Spooky Island. It's a fairground island, and you go here and you have fun. Except for this part, where like you go in there, and there are just a bunch of swinging axes, and (laughs) you're going to fight for your life. Like, what? This is like a saw trap. Yeah, they get like um, summoned to like this haunted house where everything in there is trying to kill them. And that's actually a section I really enjoy. I yeah, just think yeah. it's really cool. All these like traps and stuff trying to kill them. Like um, Scooby and Shaggy get lured into this room filled with food. And then suddenly they get like trapped to the wall and like all the food's like coming to life and trying to eat them. It's like so sick. Yeah. It kind of reminded me of Pan's Labyrinth. I'm not going to lie. Yeah. <laughs> I think you mentioned that when we were watching it. Yeah, it was a weird comparison to make, but I mean, this came out before Pan's Labyrinth. Um, but there's a scene in that where, like, it's just like this table of food, and then the pale man comes, and that's like horrifying. This is like, yeah, yeah the food is Del strangling Toro them all. Del Toro ripped off Scooby Doo. Yeah, he did. <laughs> What's up with that, what, Del Toro? What a thought. <laughs> Sorry, are you ever going to bring that part up? What? What are you know. talking about? The, the part where the guy looks like Rey Mysterio. Yeah. <laughs> so there's a villain who looks like Rey Mysterio, the wrestler. And oh, for some yeah. reason, there's like an entire fight sequence towards the end, which is <laughs> my least favorite section in the whole film. That like, just went on way too long, where Daphne and Rey Mysterio basically just start wrestling each other. Like they're on like a roof of a building, and it's actually like laid out like a wrestling ring. And like they're doing all these wrestling moves, and it's just like, what if, <laughs> why the fuck is this happening? Like it just like brings like the actual, like the crux of the third act to a huge halt every time they cut to it. It's just yeah. so dull. Yeah, but it needs to happen because he needs to fall through the hole, knock over the base and a ghost head, and then they all go free. Which yeah, then Max Which they just could goes, have like easily written around like yeah. someone accidentally falls into it or someone knocks it over or something like that. Yeah, well, more to the yeah, point, they could yeah. have finished this movie, like, I don't know, yeah. half an hour in, because Shaggy's, like, going through the ghost basin, he's, like, picking out the heads, he's like, oh, this head, Fred, or, and, like, he picks up some guy, and he's like, oh, please help me, and he's like, sorry, I'm just looking for my friends, and then he puts him back in, it's like, why can't you just, like, tip the entire basin over? Would that be so then bad? They, and then he can have done that funny joke where he just, like, abandons this guy begging for his life to find his friend. <laughs> That oh, was yes. funny. I thought I thought you were going to talk about the other really funny joke, to be honest. Which Best one? joke in this movie is when you know um, Scooby-Doo about. gets a call at the Tiki bar and he's like, oh, <laughs> uh, Scooby-Doo, uh, they, they, uh, he's like, I got a call from Mr. Do. And then he's like, oh, this guy is like, uh, Melvin Do. And he's like, no, Scooby-Doo. <laughs> and then like Scooby takes the call and he's like, oh, I know what this. Um, so he goes up to the the, the place because they want Scooby Doo because he's a pure soul and Scrappy wants him to be evil or something and grow really big. And then the end of the movie, <laughs> 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 and then the end. This is the funniest joke in the movie. Why is it the funniest joke in the movie? Because it's so <laughs> like, dumb. He's like Scooby's like being a sacrifice and he thinks it's awesome, but like he doesn't know what sacrifice means. And then like they're like, Yeah, we're gonna kill you, Scooby Doo. And then he means like, Oh, he says, Don't you mean Melvin Do? <laughs> 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 Melvin Do is just there. <laughs> never, Why is that oh. the funniest thing in this movie? It's absolutely I hilarious. Really is funny. I think all four <laughs> of us, because Connor was also there watching it. <laughs> I think all four of us would like just <laughs> like crying from laughter at that bit. Really I just don't good. know what. Yeah, like what, I don't know what about. I don't know what was about it, but that was fucking funny. Like I just, I knew I was gonna lose it because I knew when you guys were laughing at the first part of the joke, I was like, oh, here we go, and then yeah. it just came up again. Yeah, I completely <laughs> forgot about that bit. It's like the longest payoff ever. Yeah, 
I remember like the first time when Melvin Dew comes up, I laughed a lot of that and I was like, thought, oh, I'm just being stupid. That was like such a dumb thing to laugh about. And then when it came back and everyone else was laughing, I've kind of felt a bit justified. It was, it was, it was justified. <laughs> I don't get why it was funny, but it was funny. Like, I couldn't explain it's to you why I found joke. it funny. It's just a great joke. It's just like so simple, but effective. So good. That's something that James Gunn just does well, to be fair. And I think that's like, I think his sense of humour like really comes through well in this movie. I think there's a lot of like actually really great j- jokes in this. There are, yeah. One, I mean, they do have like a, like Shaggy and Scooby have like a fart slash Burp competition. That's that not very funny. That, was just, that is oh, every that time that ever happened to the movie. That sucks. Bit. Yeah, like oh, that was please. one of my least favorite bits of the whole. Marathon. It went on for so long as Goes well. Goes on for like two or three it? minutes. Yeah. And although, like, I gotta give them to it, like, give it to them. It is a little bit creative, like the way they're like creating the burps and farts. But it just goes on way too long. It's yeah, just so it's unnecessary. that was definitely a kid gag, wasn't it? Because everyone's yeah. like, "Oh, kids yeah. are like <laughs> they find poop and fart. funny, poop and funny, poop is funny, <laughs> yeah. poop funny, fart funny, burp funny, bad smells." Ha ha ha! Something James I'm surprised Gunn. we've not brought up yet is um the CGI. Oh fuck! I don't yeah. want to talk about the CGI. This is a problem. <laughs> um, this film looks awful. It does. It looks <laughs> so bad. Work. It's some of the most dated and like terrible looking CGI I've ever seen. Two thousand two, right? Two thousand two. And like the sad thing is, it doesn't improve with any of these movies. That's what I was hoping for. I was hoping two thousand two. Okay. Yeah. No, it just gets worse. It gets worse. This is the best use of CGI in any of these movies. And that is the saddest thing that I think we've seen. Especially considering one of these movies came out in twenty twenty. Yeah. Yeah. But in f- well, okay, technically you've got a hand to the last one that's not um it yeah. doesn't actually use CGI, does it? So it's not really What what do you mean? It's all CGI. No, it's 3D animation. Is it the same as CGI, is it? It's done the same way. It's like using computers. Yeah, but They're I don't computer think I don't think, generated I don't think it, images. I don't think it counts. <laughs> I really don't think it counts. Why? Why not? The fa- no, it doesn't count. It's, it's Why not? not in cuz I don't know. Explain not- yourself. It's like saying 2D animation isn't drawings and saying it's something different. Right, no, but okay, so I'm thinking of it like this, right? Like, I know CGI is obviously used like, I don't know, like most of it's like used post-production, right? Think about it this way, right? This is, my, my theory is just, like, well, if you're watching there. a film like Scooby-Doo... Are you saying it, that something that is fully created with, like, 3D animation, like, create completely created by computers is different to something that's, like... They add, they create like special effects using computers. Kind of, yeah. Because I, well, so basically what I'm trying to get at is sort of that, but also, right, you're watching a film like Scooby Doo and like there's, you know, real people in it and then they've got CGI in it, right? So they've got this weird fucking Scooby Doo looking motherfucker who looks weird, right? But the last film is, at least it's like consistent, like it's not jarring to look at when there's shit, 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 blah, blah, blah. shit CGI in it because you don't really notice it i mean obviously like we get into that in a minute with the animation and all that kind of shit but i don't know, I just don't, i just don't think it counts because it just doesn't it's it does, i don't know it just doesn't feel inconsistent like these films do god can't be i'm giving the last movie praise fuck me what a life you heard it from me okay. first um do we have anything else to add to scooby-doo um, um yeah. i would like to stop here now and uh, the marathon's over. <laughs> well, I'm not gonna lie. I didn't really listen to what Darcy just said, um, but I would just like to reiterate: yes, the, the the CGI was terrible. It was awful. Those oh, I like was alien with dudes. You. That kind of reminded me of like the Krillin from Doctor Who back in Tennis yeah. Run. This is not good. Um, I, I uh, God, man, honestly, yeah, it looked like this shit. movie is insane. This movie, okay, so I was like talking to um someone I work with today, they were like, oh, that movie is so good. I understand that people have this kind of connection to it, but I don't, and I'm, I'm kind of like puzzled as to sort of where, why? So, why? Max. Like of everything. I, I understand like nostalgia is a big factor in why people like movies, but 
this movie, Scooby Doo, people defend so vehemently. Did you ask them why they liked it? Well, no, I mean, you know, it's kind of the thing where, like, you ask someone why they like a movie, they don't really want to go into it. I didn't really want to go into it, you know. Um, but, you know, this movie is not terrible. It's absolutely not terrible. It's actually, if anything, it's actually all right. It's okay. Um, I didn't mind it. I don't know if I would watch it again, though, is the thing. I think I I've got know. about enough out of it. You know, there's only so many times you can watch the Melvin do joke. There's only so many times, you know, you can <laughs> watch Scrappy do oh, say, oh, you don't have to scrout for this job, Pally. Okay. <laughs> why, why do you say scrout? That was weird. <laughs> but yeah, um, I guess to cap it off, this is a movie. Let's go to ratings. You're right. It is a movie. <laughs> what should we rate this one out of? Uh, um, Melvin Dews. Okay. Cool. Yeah, this film is epic. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I did actually really enjoy rewatching this movie more than I was expecting to. I thought it was like really funny. I do actually, I do think a lot of the like effect work is terrible, but I think the casting is great. I think um. A lot of the like the creature designs and just like general, just the tone of the movie, I think is really good. I think they do a good job of capturing the tone of the original cartoon while also satirizing it, like poking fun at it, and doing something that feels a lot more worthwhile than what most um, live action cartoon adaptations do. I don't think it's an amazing movie. But I do enjoy it a lot, and I would probably watch it again. So I'm going to give it um, six Melvin Doos out of ten. <laughs> I love that we're right now on Melvin uh, Doos. <laughs> <laughs> Melvin do, Doos, yeah. Do. <laughs> Ooh, yeah. Um, it was a joy to watch this with you guys. Um, I, hmm, I'm not going to lie. I'm feeling the drink a bit. <laughs> so I would say... This movie is not one I'm going to watch again, not anytime soon, um, but I do appreciate it for what it is. Um, I really like the cast, man. I really think they nail it, you know. Um, yes, yeah, great cast. Matthew Lillard is probably, like, the best one there. He's really hamming it up. Shaggy as, um, yeah, as Shaggy. He's fucking brilliant. Um, he's a great actor, to be fair. I think he's really, really underrated, like. Fantastic in this, fantastic in Scream, and he delivers yeah. my favourite performance in um, Twin Peaks: The Return. He's mm-hmm. like weirdly in that, and he's incredible in it. He's such yeah. a good actor. He's bloody brilliant. Um, sorry, I'm just looking at uh, Sarah Michelle Gellar, older Buffy herself. Uh, that was the thing. Yeah, I said, oh. Sarah Michelle Gellar was in Buffy and my workmate was like have you seen Buffy? I was like no she was like what's wrong with you? <laughs> uh, sorry I haven't seen Buffy. I do love Buffy. Um, yeah really great performance from her she knows karate that's like Daphne's thing I guess for some reason because <laughs> I think they kind of wanted to stray a bit away from like Daphne's the damsel in distress now she knows karate uh, Freddie Prince Jr playing Fred, obviously <laughs> masterful, <laughs> really good. Linda Cardellini as Velma, probably one of my favourites as well. I really like her. Yeah, uh, she's great. Yeah. Super good. Yeah. Why not? I like this movie. Fuck it. But I'm still going to give it five Melvin Doos out of ten, because I don't, I just, there, there's a lot to bog it down, I think. But overall, yeah, it's it's all. Right. And in hindsight, I like it a bit more. To be fair, you can like you can enjoy a movie and like like it, and still critically, like on a critical level, give it a lower rating because you don't think yeah. it's actually a good movie. Yeah, like like on a critical, on an objective critical level, five out of ten. But on a Melvin Do level, I don't know nine. <laughs> <laughs> Hell yeah! Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I think uh, my hindsight came pretty uh, quickly 
because we uh, watched two other movies after this and it made me instantly realise that this film is like the fucking golden diamond in a sea full of other smaller little rocks. Less golden diamonds. Yes. <laughs> um, yeah. Yeah, Letterbox was trying to uh, fob me off because not only did it keep saying that I was giving it two out of five, but it also kept repeating the same action over and over again. Yeah, Darcy doesn't really know how to use Letterbox, so she accidentally <laughs> logged it five times. I'm an old oh, yeah. woman, apparently. I don't know how to use technology. Um, yeah, on like a entertainment scale, like I said, it was probably like the best of the bunch. So um, I'd probably give it about a five Melvin do. I love Melvin do so much. Five Melvin Doos. Wonderful. Yeah. Can we get nice. a woo for Melvin Do? Woohoo. Woo. <laughs> <laughs> oh, mate. Next Same. year we're going to be a I'm slog. Out. Is that a sl- slog? I've never heard that one before. Yes, a slut. <laughs> I think you should, Chris. Crack Next on. up, we've got. Um, fuck. Uh, Scooby Doo 2 Monsters Unleashed. This came out in 20. 04. And it was directed again by Roger Gosnell, um, the master himself. Written again Back. by James Gunn. Written again by James Gunn. Okay. <laughs> okay. So this one, what's it about? What's it about? You ask, and I'll tell you. Okay, Mr. Inc. They're back. They're back again. Shaggy's there. Scooby's there. Velma's there. The rest of them. Uh, and they're invited to a grand opening at Coolsville Museum of Criminology. And, um, they're displaying costumes of monsters. Wow, we all love monsters, Scooby-Doo. Uh, ubiquitous with monsters. So, then, oh, what do you know? A masked man, kind of like Doctor Doom, comes in and he's like, here's a dragon or a dinosaur or whatever, and he's, uh, he creates havoc. <laughs> and he steals the costumes of Mystery Inc. have to find out what... Uh, who Who is Doctor Doom, a.k.a... Um, Mask face and <laughs> Jonathan Jacobo. Oh, is oh, yes. Jonathan Jacobo? Jonathan Jacobo. <laughs> How do we stop him? What do we think? Uh, I made like four notes for this film because just kind of gave up. <laughs> I'm. S- I, I actually, totally being honest, I don't really remember anything about it. <laughs> Out of all of these oh. movies, this was the most forgettable. Like, obviously, mm. nobody in the first Scooby Doo I enjoyed. And then the last one, spoiler alert, was like really, 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 really bad. But this film was just kind of there. Like, it was just kind of happening in front of us. <laughs> and I didn't really, I couldn't really process it because I was like, what the fuck is this? Um, Yeah, things were ha- Like, I remember bits and pieces, but. um. <laughs> Kind of, yeah, kind of just so obviously yeah. going into this film, um, it wasn't like the first film where it started off as like a PG 13 script which they toned down to make it kid friendly. This film started off from the get go as gonna be a kid friendly movie, mm-hmm. and because of that, it just kind of feels like a very, very generic kids' movie for its time. There's nothing really interesting going on here, it's kind of like everything I was praising about the first film not being this kind of is like, it feels very soulless feels like they're just kind of trying to make a, a live action cartoon movie and it just doesn't really work. Reminds me a lot of the other sort of films like this, like the Flintstones movies that I brought up earlier. It just, Oh yeah. There's not really much to it at all. I feel like, I don't know about you guys, but, uh, you know, in the first one, I said that they all looked like they were having fun and having a good time. I didn't really feel it in this one. I didn't really feel like they really wanted to be there as much. Yeah, this kind of felt almost like a contractual obligation than like a passion project, like I think the first film felt like. Well, what happens in this movie? I actually exactly. don't really know. I on- I actually don't know. The monsters are like, unleashed. Yeah, the monsters are unleashed. So what do we get? We get. <laughs> The goo monster, which is a big lump of tar. Yep. Um, that's it. I don't remember any others. No, I don't either. You got the um the submarine guy. Oh yeah, he was creepy. Yeah, the, guy, yeah. the uh, big submarine. The aqua suit. 
face. Yeah, yeah. Suit, the yeah, diver man. Suit. Yeah, yeah. So they like and, um, they take a bunch <laughs> of like monsters from the original cartoon that were kind of like beloved and memorable, and they like adapt them to this. Like, I remember the goo guy and the submarine guy from the old TV shows. My favourite part is when you said the memorable ones and we're all struggling to think of what the other fucking ones oh, were. Oh, no, there was, um, there was a guy who was a skeleton but he had two eyes and it was just like this like weird like thing on bones that like jumped everywhere. Yes. Have you got a picture of them there? You have to like, um, the guy's like bold. Oh, we kind of like, it like, looks um, like he's wearing seaweed all yeah. around him. He's got like big bulging eyes. He's got like, something like the Adams family. Thick fingers. You've got like a there's like a dinosaur sort of character who flies around. Pretty sure that's a pterodactyl of some sort. Oh, like the pterodactyl. Yeah. Yeah. That's... Oh, I don't remember. Yeah, I don't remember. That's I don't remember a... them really. Oh, no, I remember the um, yeah, these um, capped um, bold fellow. Yeah, because there's like a bit where he gets kicked in the balls. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I remember Why? him. Yeah. Or them. I don't even know. Well, I feel like if you okay, looked at so a picture of him, Max, you'd know who we're talking yeah, about. Yeah, it would trigger your memory I'm looking somewhat. Right now. Well, like that, that, yeah, the bold guy. Yeah, yeah. Who's like not really got a neck. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, exactly. So, okay, so now we've established who the monsters are. <laughs> you can kind of tell our experience with this movie was not a very good one. Um, was, okay, like, the, the villains are not good, man. Not good. And the um the actors are like kind of I don't know like really what's happening with them. Linda Cardellini has like been made to put on a higher voice, and I don't know why this was. No, she's like speaking in a, like a higher register, and I could only imagine. And I hate to say it, there's a fucking I I, I can't believe this, but I, I I don't know like what to make her like seem more vulnerable to make her seem like more like. What, submissive? Relatable or something? Mm. I don't know. Yeah, like, oh, well, she's a woman. <laughs> Fuck off. Too right. <laughs> uh, like, what are you doing? What are you doing? And she's very noticeably talking at a higher register. What was wrong with her actual voice? I think that if you hadn't watched these back to back, you probably wouldn't have picked up on that. But because we did, I it was really... wouldn't have picked up on it that. It was really jarring. It was jarring. Yeah. It was really. I, I, I was like actually like kind of offended. Like, like how dare you do that? Like, uh, I almost like I, I don't. Uh, I hate to picture like the scenes behind the scenes. You know, like oh yeah, Linda. You know what? Your character, she wasn't as vulnerable and like sexy in the last one as we would have liked it to be. So why don't you put on a higher voice <laughs> and maybe people won't want to fuck you a bit more? How yeah. dare you? Grim. <laughs> and there's a subplot with um with her where she's trying to impress Seth Green, who's in the movie, playing some like geeky like scientist sort of guy that she has a crush on. His name's Patrick. Patrick. <laughs> there's like a bit yeah. where like he's there's like he's like um possibly the villain, and then it's like revealed that he maybe. isn't. Um, he's Wait. like a red herring sort of thing. But yeah, she's like trying yeah. to impress him, and um, there's like a whole subplot where like Daphne's like, "Oh, you just gotta like dress up and look good." So he's, she's like in this like leather skin tight outfit. She takes off her glasses. She like dolls herself up to look like conventionally attractive to win him over. And I was just like, "What the? What's the point of this? It's like just such a generic subplot." That so teenagers can get their film. awakening. Chris, because I think a lot of us folks had some sort of awakening. Well, not me, because I didn't watch it when I was younger, but, but someone they did. Just done that with the first film. Like she looks, like she looks yeah. really hot. Like how she was anyway. Right, but you, you know how it is. Society. Wherever. Shut up. Is it society? I don't even know what I'm trying to say anymore. To be honest, <laughs> I'm tired. <laughs> when did this come out? Uh, two thousand four. Two thousand and. Four? Yeah, yeah. two thousand four, I think. Yeah, yeah, two thousand four. It's kind of why she's dressed they up like a Britney's uh, backing dancer and that fucking red latex. Jesus Christ! <sighs> why they bother? Yeah. <laughs> why they bother with it? I don't really get it either. And it was it was the most random thing, especially when it's obvious that uh, 
you know, Velma and Daphne are a little bit gay. Like, the sexual tension between them was unbelievable. The best parts of this movie were when Daphne and Velma were interacting. Because, mm. like, all I got was just, like... Hot gay vibes. Gay vibes. gay. Yeah. But, like, they had, like, a really good dynamic going on. Yeah. And whenever it cut to, like, I was waiting some for them other to people kiss. talking, I just didn't care. When they were crawling then, on like, the floor. And, like, Velma's supposed to... Yeah, exactly. I was waiting for them to kiss. Yeah. And, then, like, <laughs> and then, like, Velma's talking to fucking... Um, whoever the fuck Seth Green <laughs> I'm like these guys have no chemistry whatsoever why does he why does she like him it doesn't matter this sucks this ke- the chemistry is not there it's not there at all why what like why am I supposed to be invested in this movie there's no there's nothing to latch on to yeah it's really weird because they're great actors like I love Linda Cardellini and like Freaks and Geeks and she's good in the Avengers movies as well and Seth Green has been great in so many things like Buffy the Vampire Slayer and he's like one of my favourite characters in the Austin Powers movies like I think they're both really good so it's weird that they just like feel so lifeless and they're, they have no chemistry at all. That's the weird thing though like away from each other they're like somewhat justifiable characters. But yeah, when you stick them in a scene with each other, it was like the most... It was like... I don't even think away from each other like they were very good. I don't think either of them were really that good in the movie. Oh, no, no, no. Not in this like film in general, but like oh, compare was, it. it was, yeah, that's what I mean. It was just no, like... It's like we, like we said before, it just kind of feels like everyone was kind of phoning it in. I well, don't they, think I anyone was I guess they had really to, didn't they? I guess it's one of those... No. It's just one of those things. I don't, they they don't... didn't have to. They could have tried. Yeah. Well, I mean, even like Alicia Silverstone is in this movie. I'm like, wait a minute. The girl from Clueless. Yes, oh, Alicia yeah. Silverstone. She's in this movie. <laughs> she is. She does nothing. She, she does sucks, nothing, yeah. man. She sucks. She's not good in this. Everyone She's in this kind of sucks. The same sucks, with um, Peter Boyle, who shows up, plays Old Man Winkles. Um, probably best known. He was in Young Frankenstein and Everybody Loves Raymond. Oh, I love him. Yeah. He's just kind of there plays this really forgettable character the one who has a a, a grudge against Jaco- jacobo yeah he's like another red herring where it just turns out he's like he used to be a villain he's actually like trying to turn his life around now max looks really confused like who the fuck is <laughs> i literally don't remember what what this is I don't yeah know what he's this like, character he, is. He's, he's, like an old, old. he's an yeah. old bold man they like there's a bit where they go into this bar where he's at and um Shaggy and Scooby are undercover and they're like talking to him and he's like talking about oh the mystery gang they like they took me off this that path of evil and they put me on a path of good and then Shaggy's yeah. like oh maybe you have a a lot of debt to the, the mystery ink maybe you, you like them and he's like the mystery ink if I saw them right now I'd rip their heads off or something like that yeah, sounds about right. And they right, like yeah. they like bust into what they think is like a secret layer, and he's like planning out some like good deed with a group of other people in I'm his sorry, warehouse. My, my favorite thing right now is just watching Max's face. It's Max just, is like, it's, "What the fuck are you talking?" About? He just Max looks thinks alone. I'm just like I don't making remember a thing up. about this. I don't remember it. No, it's all no. I I'm don't. I'm surprised I even remember that. To be fair, no, I only remember but it because I, I would him. not remember a thing about this movie if no. I hadn't got my notes written down. Um, I don't even have notes, and I'm I'm str- I'm struggling. No. A I think bit. you remember the scene where like they go into like the club and like it's like a Scooby Doo hater club. Yeah, and they go in and like Shaggy's got like a hat on and Scooby's got a wig on. Oh yeah, and they only realise that it, like Scooby Doo is a dog. When he takes his wig off. Yeah, that was stupid. What's, what's that with that? Yeah, but that's kind of like um in the first movie where Scooby Doo dresses up as a woman to get on the plane. Oh my god! How yeah. Uh, yeah, and then when he's barking at that cat and no, like no one just questions it. Everyone's yeah. like, "Yep, yeah, that woman's angry at the cat." Which also okay. makes me re- remember one of my favorite bits in the first movie where like um that we didn't bring up that I thought I'd bring up quickly where Fred Crack is on. like, "You got to flick these dogs on the nose to." get him in line he flicks Scooby on the nose and Scooby just punches him in the face <laughs> gets <him> every time <laughs> yeah that was alright what could not happen in this they movie don't try. I wanted yeah. something to happen in this movie there's nothing like that in this movie no it wasn't funny which is really upsetting to be honest and it's weird considering it's the same writer 
He didn't try either, did no. he? He was just like, oh, He yeah. didn't try. He didn't care, clearly. I think James yeah. Gunn was just like, oh, it's a paycheck. Yeah, and it yeah, kind of just feels yeah, like not. everyone was like that. Oh, it's a yeah. paycheck. That's it. Fair play. What can I say? <laughs> it's not much I can no, say not fair it. play. Honestly, I'm sick of it. <laughs> <laughs> I just I just don't really care about this film. I'm sorry. I'm going to upset. I think I'm going to upset a lot of people. You think? You think the writers of Shrek Two would be where they are today if not for putting effort into that movie? Right, I'm sorry, no. but that's where not an argument to have with today, me though. anyway. Look, don't ask me this shit, man. <laughs> I'm kind of drunk. <laughs> In this film, um, Mystery Inc., they have like a pad. They have like their own like house. Oh yeah, that they like their in. offices. Yeah, yeah. Like and it literally looks like a set from like a Backstreet Boys music video. It or looks something. ridiculous, doesn't like, it? It's so like it looks colourful. Like a set from iCarly. Yeah, it's like so ridiculous and colourful and like it's ridiculously shit. And it's like so big as well. Yeah. And there's only like five of them. It's, it's weird. Like it's the so most, weird. Like 2004 thing you'll ever see. It's so weird. Like Mystery Inc. They've oh, got a new yes. logo, which is like M and I in like um this really like groovy looking yeah this really like curly looking font it's all like smooth rounded edges and it looks awful oh it is hideous yeah. like it actually offended me when i saw it to be it honest it like reminded me of like a set you'd see on like a one of those old like like old kids shows like you'd an see Amanda it, like show- oh my god I'm no so like sorry. one of those old shows that was like a live show you'd watch on like itv or like Oh, I see BBC what you mean. Yeah, one yeah, yeah. at like nine a.m. on a Saturday or something, like Dick and Dom, that sort of shit. It it was garish. Yeah, it didn't look good. <laughs> to be quite it honest, it was a bit garish. Yeah, but they all like live together. This is yeah. like only furthers the the theory that the Scooby Doo gang are polyamorous. They must be. They're, they're all. They've got. They're to all be. fucking. They're all fucking. They are. We like to think of Scooby Doo as being quite. Oh, they're all versions. No, they're not. They are, <laughs> they're fucking more than anyone. Like, <laughs> clearly. <laughs> clearly. These are like, okay. How, like, how, did, how did we get these here? Are like the, the least, the <laughs> least virgins, what, okay? What is There's happening? no way. Like, come on. Of course, they're all, they're all going at it. Like, no way. Like, that's, that's just a big fan theory, I think. It was like the Scooby-Doo gang, are like polyamorous. <laughs> they're always hanging out with each other. You think they haven't tried it at least once? Like, of course. Of course they have. <laughs> no, it's a kid's movie. No one has sex in a kid's movie. But they yeah, can they look sexy. they do it on screen, and... man. They do it off screen. Oh, oh my God. They go back to their pad. Yeah. They go back to the, the uh, mystery it's incorporated the shag pad. pad. <laughs> and they, yeah, the shaggy pad. And they <laughs> go at pad. it. <laughs> <laughs> um, what have you seen? You, you what have you seen? Out of curiosity, I looked up Raja Gosnell's um directorial filmography. Right. Mm-hmm. What have you seen? All of it. What do you know? Um. Yeah, but what is it? What is it? You. <laughs> all of it. Right. So you got the two Scooby Doo movies. Then you got the first two Smurfs movies. Um, Home Alone ooh. three. Big Mama's House. Oh my god. Beverly Hills Chihuahua. No. And Show Dogs. Oh my fuck. Uh, oh okay. my what a fuck. Career. Apparently he was an actor in Mrs. Doubtfire. Oh. But that's a good film. It is a good film. So what the fuck happened? He edited Mrs. Doubtfire apparently as wow. well. What the fuck happened there? I mean he's still getting work though. So he's clearly doing something right. Someone wants to I thought him. you were going to like turn the phone around and be like, he's directing another live action Scooby Doo. Oh, yes, and he's directing Venom 2. <laughs> <laughs> I don't like the. Um, I'm scared. <laughs> Fred's arc. You say Fred's arc? Fred has Fred's an arc, arc in this movie? No, Fred and Freddy Daphne's an arc. arc. What the fuck is that about? Sorry. I just no. thought I'd bring that up. No, shut up, Darcy. Um, what do you mean? Fred's arc <laughs> is like, okay, so he, he has this like scene, I think Daphne, where he's like, oh, f- she's, she says, Freddie, you want to talk? And he says, talking's for wimps. Where we're like, hell yeah, Freddie. Rep- <laughs> 
represent, rep, represent, yeah, represent all the men out there. Big up toxic <laughs> Talk, talking masculinity. Is for wimps. We love it. We don't, we don't, we don't like talking. <laughs> But we just want beers and we want cars and fucking, uh, yeah. I don't know, whatever else. Crying, want. that's not what a men thing. Crying, yeah, talking that's wimpy. for losers. Crying is wimpy. And, <laughs> and his entire arc for this entire movie, and it, and it completes itself maybe half an hour before the movie's finished, is that he realises that talking's all right. Yeah. Talking's pretty good. I actually completely right. forgot about this. Yeah, so did I. Yeah. It it was a weird arc as well, because it didn't really like... <laughs> I just don't feel like it really did anything. Didn't really conclude. No. It was just it's like, just yeah, talking's all right. Maybe I'll talk about things. He was like, Maybe I'll talk about the stuff that's on my mind. Yeah, he's all like, hell yeah, I'm going to start talking to people. And everyone's like, cool. It, it kind of feels like <laughs> James Gunn wanted to like have lit, like this smart thing about toxic masculinity to teach kids it's all right to... Like male kids, it's all right to like talk about your feelings and stuff. But well, he no, just they just didn't really run with it at yeah, all. Yeah, yeah, it was just like you didn't handle yeah. it well. No, it's almost like it didn't exist. The whole arc was piss. Yeah, it's piss. <laughs> yeah. Ooh. And Fred and Daphne, that was also piss. I can't, I can't help myself. Fred and though. Daphne. What was the point in that? Fred, was that a thing? Oh, I guess it was. Yeah, they like kiss at the end. Yeah. Oh, where did that come from? <laughs> I mean, that was they like kind of like it, a, to be fair, they but... did hint about it. They always had like a a thing there, like an unspoken thing in all the, the shows and like in the first movies. Yes, so. but not in these movies. And when Velma and Daphne are the only like that's the only sexual tension I feel Literally, going the only through these is... movies. Why do I do care you know when Max Fred have... and Daphne they kiss? Have to when Fred and in Fe- the straight yeah, Daphne relationship. Kiss. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you can't have gays. It's annoying. Kid, yeah. You can only have heterosexuality. Have gays Do you have exist. anything else to add we have to about this movie? By having gays every exist. interaction with Velma and Daphne be great, every interaction with the male and female be terrible. They were definitely meant yeah. to be gay. Anyway, yeah, I agree. Is there anything left no, to say? Anything but, but anyone this, wants to bring up? Fuck this movie. No? What are we rating this one out of? Um, Who knows? What happened in this movie? Um, what could we rate it out of, Chris? Um, polyamory. Oh, God. Okay. Polyamory it is. Ooh. Um, yeah. This film is just like kind of the, like, the complete antithesis of the first movie, mm-hmm. where I feel like that kind of like went against what so many of these similar... Um, like live action adapted cartoon movies do, and actually kind of like was more self aware and smart with what it was doing. This kind of just felt like a generic kids movie, kind of just doing everything what the first film didn't. So I'm gonna give it um two out of ten. Polly Amory. <laughs> Polly Amory. <Poly-amory. laughs> I was like trying to think of like a plural for that, and I was like, what the fuck? Polly Amory's. Okay. <laughs> yes, this movie was terrible, and I did not like it. I will never watch it again. Um, what was there? What's that saying? So it's a give me more Belmer and Daphne. Get out of here. Three, Wally Amory's out of ten. Yeah. Go on, Darcy. I know you're you're all Darcy gagging in suspense. Died. Um. Yeah, I'm not going to waste too much time talking about this because I don't really remember any of it. Um, pretty sure I gave it a two. So two polyamories out of ten. Wow. <laughs> pretty low, if you ask me, boys. But it only gets lower from here. All right, guys. So our third mo- <laughs> You're right there, Max. <laughs> oh, I think, I think he's feeling it. Right, so our third movie was Scoob from 2020. It's a very recent movie. Scoob! Um, directed by Tony Savone. I think that's what it is. We can't tell if it's a hard C or a soft C. And what? essentially... Who gives a shit? This film is 
Scooby Doo's greatest adventure yet, according to a. Uh... Well, that's not true. <laughs> a letterbox. We've talked about his greatest adventure already. So the st- <laughs> the story kind of begins with um how Scooby and Shaggy first met and how um Shaggy sort of uh saves Scooby from some police officer that wants to take him in, and how they sort of um met all met each other and they became the Mystery Inc. Incorporated. Blah blah blah. And now apparently. They have to, oh, they have to stop the unleashing of a ghost dog Cerberus upon the world, and stop the dog apocalypse. There you go. The what? That is apparently the the plot of the film is to stop the evil three headed dog from causing the dog apocalypse. Yeah, it sucks. It sucks. It sucks. It is terrible. It is a terrible movie. It sucks. It's honestly absolutely awful. There's nothing. I can't believe how bad this movie is. <laughs> But an- um, okay, so it's animated. Yes, it is. Right. Free- but the yeah. thing is, is that, yeah, okay, maybe you could say, like, oh, the animation wasn't that bad, but it actually is, and it's not, like, okay, it's not <laughs> It's not awful, it's not awful, but it's just no. the same shit. It is yeah, 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 yeah. It's the same it's, shit. It's very it generic. Over and over again, it sucks. Yeah. No, it's... the animation is awful. I will no, I, 100% I, say the terrible. animation is awful. I don't hate the animation, but I think it's, it's really very... Bad. It, it looks generic and cheap, but I don't think it's the worst animation it I've ever seen. dated. It, it does. doesn't look it, like it, something it... that came out in 2020. It no, looks no, like no. something that came out in the early 2000s. Um... Like, I think of, like, <laughs> uh, like a... Like a Pixar film from the early 2000s, like, yeah. I don't know, Monsters, Inc. or The Incredibles. Monsters, Inc. And it looks better than this, because it just looks shit. Yeah. I don't it know what... absolutely terrible. I don't know what happened either, You know how much effort went into fucking producing the amount of hairs on uh, Sully's uh, like, character yeah. in Monsters, Inc.? That's the amount of effort that went into this entire movie. Was this a Warner Brothers movie? Yeah. Because I'm starting to, I was starting to wonder, like where the budget for this film came from. Because I don't know what the fuck they spent it on, which was my biggest concern. They spent it on the cast, hundred percent. That's what they spent it on. Because it's got like what a, a waste of time. It's got like an all star cast. Like it's got Zac Efron plays Fred. Um, oh, it's got Mark got Wahlberg in it. Mark it? Wahlberg plays um, Blue Falcon. Because they they try and do this weird thing where they almost like create like a like an Avengers like um Hanna Barbera like extended universe in one movie. Oh, that was t- oh, so you got like Blue God. Falcon who's in there. You got Dick Dastardly who's the main villain and obviously you got Muttley as well cuz they're both from like wacky races. Mm-hmm. I Yeah. I think Jason Isaacs is in Jason this movie. Jason Isaacs, yes. you got Will Jason Isaacs is a fucking fantastic actor. Like, yeah. why, why I, is it in this? I think one of You've my... You've got Will Forte plays <sighs> Shaggy Rogers, and really? he's, like, a really great comedian. You've got Gina yeah. Rodriguez as Velma. You've got Amanda Seyfried as Daphne. You've got Ken Young plays oh, a dog in the film. I've You've got I... Tracy Morgan, who's in it as well. You've got fucking... Um, <laughs> Simon Cowles in the movie right, right. Can, plays can we... himself right. for literally yeah. no reason. <laughs> he literally just shows up randomly. It's like I want to buy the mystery gang, but Fuck you, sake. um, Shaggy and Scooby, you're like not good. You're axed. And they like meet him, and they just start singing "Shallow" from A Star Is Born for right. some reason. I think one of my biggest problems with um companies doing this is that you spend all your money on a cast right which is fine if they're going to be in your film no it's not but, no no right, but, 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 uh, but what i'm trying to get at is that it's an animation why don't you just do good like voice actors and just spend the rest of the money on making a good fucking movie I christina don't hendrix was in it as well apparently who christina hendrix she's um oh show me she's a madman firefly and Drive, Neon Demon. Uh, I recognise the, I recognise the hair. She's a gorgeous, great actress. Gorgeous hair. Yeah. John no, Demaggi- real, I, Dimaggio the... was in it as well. He oh wow, Bender. really? Well, this he is played what I mean. a, like, yeah. he played a character called Restaurant Owner. Restaurant Owner, I oh, like that. Right. No, it just yeah, it just pisses yeah. me off when films do that. Like, just why don't you spend your money? on making a decent film and getting good voice actors rather than just like ho- you know, just popping in famous people because it will bring in people it's, it's boring it's boring and unimaginative it is, it's animation shit. It's... and it has no personality and that's why i 
I hate it with every degree I can hate a movie. It has no personality. No one made this movie because they wanted to make it. I, I see this movie. I'm like, yeah, this is a studio movie. Yeah, I don't see it. Feels it feels like think, a studio this is movie. It does. Project. It is shit. It's absolutely shit. I think it would have been better in 2D. Like, something like the Spider Spider Verse. Spider Verse. Spider Verse. Um, compared oh, to that, yeah, yeah, I that was sick. To, um, something like I lost my body. I would compare it to Wolf Walkers, which uses animation. These movies use animation as a way to captivate the audience, and this movie uses animation as a way to say, look, we're an animated movie. Fuck you. How dare you? Like, this is, is so shit, okay? These, these other movies that use animation as a tool to create something that will elicit a different emotion in you, that's something I appreciate. Mm-hmm. This is something, that, okay, this is a kid's movie and we have to make it animated because kids love animated yeah. movies. That's shit. That's absolute bullshit. Okay, it's there's nothing to this movie. I just felt nothing. There's nothing to I it. felt nothing. Yeah. I would honestly, I would consider like Spider Verse to be like the gold standard of like animated movies. Oh, it's, it's so um, good as well. Because it's a film that can appeal to all ages. Like it, I would a hundred percent show mm. my kids that movie because it is like it's a very child friendly movie. Is like vibrant, full of color. It's like a film that kids would love and get so much out of. Mm. And like compared, comparing this to that, this is just nothing. It just, that film is like a film that really feels like a passion project. It feels like there's a good reason for that film yeah. to exist, but there's no reason for this film to exist Do you know what? That all. is actually a good thing that you bring up, right? Because the whole time you were talking about that, I was just thinking, at least that film had its own idea and its own like, personality and like like yeah. it had a story to it like whereas this film was just oh the avengers was popular recently i think we should just remake yeah. the avengers and the thing with that with like spider verse is it's not an original story no, none of the characters I mean. are original but, but they yeah. actually tried like you get people that are actually passionate about it whereas this, there's no passion in it at all i just feel like which they is don't really need, they just I just don't understand why. Okay, I understand they do it for the money, right? This is I understand this, but why else would you make a movie that you just don't give a fuck about? Yeah, like, imagine how like, long that must have taken to make, and they just don't. But it's especially it's no baffling care. to me because they get Tony um, Savone, who's a guy who's actually directed two D animated Scooby Doo movies fuck before. Sake. The only thing he's directed in his career so far are like um, 2D Hanna-Barbera stuff. Like he's directed um, a bunch of Tom and Jerry stuff, a couple of Scooby-Doo stuff, some Flintstone stuff. Although it's like some of the worst stuff. Like you got, he directed Scooby-Doo and Kiss. He directed (laughs) Flintstones and WWE. Like really shit stuff. At least he actually directed... 2D stuff where he actually had to deal with the characters. Like, you'd think this person would actually like understand these characters and like understand the purpose of it, but you don't get that at all in this film because it's a studio movie. Yeah, because the studio told them what to do. They have to check this. This is the same reason why Edgar Wright was booted from Ant Man because Marvel and Disney. No, it's Marvel. Marvel had their checklist. They had a formula going, and Edgar Wright did not want to adhere to that formula. That's why this movie failed. This is why Scoop failed. Because, okay, maybe Tony Savone had some ideas, but Warner Brothers said no. That's what, that's honestly all I can think of. That's why this movie stuff. Because they want to appear, appeal to the, the broadest audience possible, and in doing so, they appeal to no one. Yeah, yeah this, is, this, this is a problem. But the thing is, with this film, they they constantly prove to you that they don't understand the character at all, which is weird because like the first like ten fifteen minutes where they show like um, Scooby and Shaggy meeting, at first when they like first meet, I was like, this is shit. But then when you actually get like them meeting the mess, the rest of the mystery gang, and like going into like them investigating this 
thing like as kids i was like okay this is actually this is something this like actually kind of feels like scooby-doo there's a couple of jokes throughout where i was like this really does feel like scooby-doo like um there's a bit when they're in the, like a bowling alley and they've got these robots coming after them and um shaggy and scooby like kind of tricked them by pretending to be workers in the cafe at this um bowling alley and they start taking these robots orders it's not a very funny scene, but I was like, yeah, that is classic Scooby-Doo. <laughs> and then just the rest of it is like, they don't understand it at all. Like, See, I, they don't get any of the actors to even remotely sound like any of the no, characters. They don't, like, you've got Will Forte as Shaggy, who doesn't sound like Shaggy, he just sounds like Will Forte. Like, um, Scooby you've got Scooby-Doo, although they do actually have um, Fred Winkler, who's a character, um, an actor who actually has played Scooby-Doo loads. He, like, for the most part, just speaks in fluent English. He doesn't do any of, like, the broken English, like, dog sort of language that you know from Scooby-Doo. Occasionally he brings it in, but for the most part, he just speaks in fluent English. (laughs) And it's like, what? Why? I thought... He doesn't know this language as well as, like, anybody else. That's why he talks and, like, weird... (sighs) I just thought it. Oh, yeah, I like he never head, like he calls Shaggy Raggy once, yeah, and rag- that's like it. Yeah, and then he goes back to Shaggy. It's yeah, fucking weird. He goes weird, like ranks like... Raggy, and like, that's it. Yeah, okay. the rest of it he, he just he, speaks like, English. It's so inconsistent. He says something that's like that does like the shh sound. Yeah, it's like well, what did you say, R- Raggy? Then I thought it. I oh, I actually thought it was gonna oh, have like some sort of promise towards the beginning, where yeah, where they all what? sort of like met up and they became yeah. a thing, and I was like, okay, this is cool. Yeah, and then, I actually kind of enjoyed what? the first. Do you know five, where ten the minutes. second I lost my interest was when fucking Simon Cow sits at the end of that table? I went fuck this yeah. film. When Simon Cow showed up, I was like, okay, fuck this. I film. know what this film's that's, gonna be. Yeah, that's exactly. And that it. was exactly what. That's when I, I lost all my love. That for was it as the well. point where I was like, this is gonna be shit. When they started singing Shallow, I was like, yeah, this is fucking awful. Like, everything before I that, faith. I was like, when, okay. Yeah, I lost faith when Shaggy, it was like right at the beginning, and Shaggy got out of his smartphone and went on Spotify. Yeah. Oh, I, right, At yeah. that point, I was like, <laughs> okay, this is a bit iffy. But I ignored that. It could turn <laughs> around. It could be something... And then when it actually got to like them doing the first like investigations, kids, I was like, okay, this is actually kind of like it's cute, yeah, it's it could, kind yeah, of enjoyable. It could have been and then just after that, it just kind of turned, and I was like, yeah, there's nothing redeemable Honestly, about this movie at all. I need to ask the question, right? Why? And and obviously, anyone's gonna be like, why was anyone in this film? But specifically, why was Simon Cowell in this movie? Why not? Because he's a person that people knows. But kids aren't gonna kids aren't gonna know who he is. I just didn't get it. What was the point? What was he there for? He was there to break the gang up. I just Oh, it's fucking dumb. I think he's their investor. So, um his son is in the movie. He um plays like a kid who has one line in the film. So I think what probably happened is his son is a huge Scooby Doo fan. Oh, so his son's... In- oh, okay. He uh-huh. weaned his way into the movie to make his son proud. I 100% think that's what happened. I swear to God, that is... That's what... Like, part of me is meant to... I don't know, am I meant to go, oh, that's nice, but I don't. I don't feel that. I feel like, no. fuck off. Why? Yeah, because Simon Cowell's a cunt. Do you know what? It's not even that. I just don't think it was necessary. What was the point? What was his... What was the point in him being there? Why am I so angry? I don't know. I just don't see the point. What was no. I'm angry. Fuck it. What was the okay, point? I'm angry. What was the point? I'm angry. Like, it, we wasted our terrible. life watching that. Okay, first of all, the animation sucks, but like Simon Gowell looks the worst. <laughs> he does. Yeah, he his eyes really are really bad. weird. Sorry. His eyes did look weird, though. Tell me I'm wrong. They did. The majority Why of... was he there? Just to be Simon Cat? Yeah. Literally. What? Who cares? Why was he there? The majority of the animation in this film actually looks like um something you'd expect from like a 3D animated show on like nick jr or something like that or like like a disney channel like 3d animated show like really 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 low budget just kids tv that's kind of what a lot of the animation looks like especially simon cowell's design it looks so cheap it looks so rushed it looks like no effort or time has been put into it at all Velma looks like a mum yeah i have 
you didn't care, and like I don't, I don't think it. Like okay, you know people will be like, oh, but the colors. But <laughs> who cares? Like yeah, that's what they're able to do with animation these days. Whether they step it up a notch, like Spider Verse, like I Lost My Body, like Wolf Walkers, you know, why don't they step it up a little bit? Okay, so here's here's a little story for you. I go into like the, the screening of Wolf Walkers I've never seen before, um, and it starts, and the it, it starts and the credits are rolling and like the animation's going, and I just burst into tears because I've never seen animation like this before. And it's so beautiful. And then I compare it to this. Scoob. And it's like, okay, what are you doing with animation? What are you, what are you doing with the, the, the technical abilities that you have at your disposal to try to make this a cut above the rest? They're not doing anything with it. No. It's just, so what's the point? It's so why, cheap. Why make the movie? It's so phoned in. Like, there's no love or passion or anything put into this film. No. It just exists because... You know, it's just a cheap film for kids. That is literally all and it is. And why put in any effort to make a movie that's for kids? It's just kids that are going to see it. They're just going to look at the bright colours and go, wow. That's just, cool. It's something that frustrates and angers me so much. Because, like, there's so many... Great like, kids films? Great yeah. kids movies. Like, movies that 100% I would love to show any kids I have in the future. Like, and I... Do you think it's? I think it's important to make something that's good for kids because they're smarter than you think. Like, know there's definitely going to be a lot they? of kids who are like, "Oh, it's pretty colors," but after a while, most of them are going to know if something's shit, like you just said, Darcy. Mm, like, and the thing is that you can. I don't know, you can entice them with the pretty colours and stuff, but a lot of them are going to get really bored and they're not going to want to watch it anyway. So what's the point? You're just wasting your time. Like, and kids are like squirrels. This is a film <laughs> especially. I I don't really know what there is for kids at all in this movie because... There's nothing for no one like, in this movie. There's a bunch of like references there who just, that just seem like they're there for like the adults, like... Like I said earlier, where they like sing "Shallow" from "A Star Is Born." There's like a a reference to Tinder at one point. Yeah, these like, are all references like a bunch as well. Of, are going to be dated that... really quickly as well, and kids yeah, aren't going to be all. dated. But like, kids aren't going to know what it is. Like, no aren't. kids have seen "A Star Is Born." No kids have used Tinder. No kids know who Simon Cowell is. No, exactly. <laughs> so they're going to be like, "What the fuck is this?" I have no clue what this is, and they're going to just lose interest. And I don't think there's enough to really yeah. entice any kids into the movie at all. I don't think there's anything to entice anyone, really. I think it was just something that was thrust upon us as movie marathon podding people. Yeah. We have suffered about animation on this podcast. And we've never gone really in depth with it, but I fear the death of animation. Don't. It actually I scares fear me. The death of a, an art form that brings us closer to who we are as people. I get so much out of an animated movie that tries. When when you make an animated movie, you are putting in more effort, I feel, than you would if you were making a live action movie. Yeah. And to make it on the scale as you would a live action movie, you are putting in more effort. Mm. When you make a movie like Scoop, <laughs> you're putting in zero effort. Yeah. Do you, want... you are putting in the algorithm that you have for a fucking superhero movie. This is a superhero movie. <laughs> it is a superhero movie. This is, no, okay. This is below Avengers a superhero well. movie. No, do you know what, yeah. though? Max has fully broken my heart, right? Because whilst he was talking... I kind of had that thought as well. Like, right, imagine if, like, animation, like, someday does die, whatever, right? And all we've got left are films that came before, whatever, right? Cool. But imagine those kids that aren't going to have, like, the same sort of, like, love and desire that we've had for, like, animation and stuff. Like, it's part of what, it's one of part of the reasons that I do art for a living is because I loved cartoons and, you know, I mean, obviously, I don't do animation because it, it takes a lot of effort, but I admire people that do because it takes a lot of effort. It's amazing. It's a it's a beautiful thing to have something that just isn't watching people walk around. 
obviously actors, you know, that's different. But you know what I mean? Like, there's something different about it. I think, yeah, um, yeah the... different emotions with an animation. Yeah, that you can't convey the live action. Yes. Yeah, Thank it's you. like um, my favorite animated movie is Anomalisa, because I think that's a film that just managed to really capture just like kind of the human experience better than any live action movie I've ever mm. seen. And like, it would really suck, like if that film was live action it wouldn't work as yeah. well as it does stop motion yeah no and the thing about anomalisa is they actually fucking tried to make that movie. yeah they yeah. actually had like a crowdfunder to do that they tried they tried with every fiber of their being and this is the that amount movie. of money that that movies in the world because film. they they, yeah. they had a vision for it isn't and it this this movie has no vision wasn't okay. the film a stop motion so what... film as well yeah. so could you why do you know how long like an... fucking hell why is it just like oh we'll make it animated because kids like animated movies it's like a default if it's a kids movie it's animated oh for god's Fuck sake you. yeah how I, dare you how I dare you use so this sick form of, that. of anime how dare you use this form of art okay to elicit just something that a kid would enjoy literally you don't have to put any in any, like, any, has anyone ever any watched bojack horseman recently but i tell ju- me i just kind of like i kind of find it offensive to um shit. make a kid like just instantly look at Sorry. this is something made for kids this needs less effort than something that's made for but an adult. But that's what they do, Chris. This is like, the problem. This is why the films are shit. And this is why... I, I'm not sure if they're doing it on purpose, but this is why they want to go ahead and be like, we don't need to make 2D or decent 3D animation because, you know, kids are just going to watch it and they're not going to care about it so we can spend the budget on yeah, something else. It's ridiculous. Fuck that. Like, Fuck you, that shit. Make a good think film. Of like, um... Look at like the '90s Disney Renaissance, like films like The Lion King, yes, Beauty and the Beast, and um, yes. even like stuff early post that, like Treasure Planet and Lilo and Stitch, or even like the early like Pixar films, like Toy Story, Monsters Inc., that sort of stuff. Those films are more than just good kids movies; they're Iconic. great movies generally they're staples they're people Literally, they're people stage. that really <laughs> cared about making great movies and didn't care about just pandering to kids just making something flashy and pretty just to keep someone's attention for an hour and a half they're people who actually had a lot of passion and actually mm-hmm. wanted to tell a good story yeah like lilo and stitch is one of those films that whenever the first things that come to mind are like it has so much heart and soul in it like, it's just so wholesome. Yeah. Like, how can you not want to make a film like that? Why do you want to make another Scoob? Who wants another yeah, Scoob? Like, no I, one. I think of um recently when me and Darcy watched Beauty and the Beast, and I was like, I burst out crying multiple times during I the film. I love that film. Like, I think of the huge emotional impact that film has on me as an adult, mm. and like compare that to Scoob. <laughs> Do you know what that makes? Do you know what that actually makes me so sad? Like when you think about it, because like I know I've just literally just spoken about that, but what if it actually comes to one day that kids don't have that same sort of connection with like films because all the films are shite? Obviously, that's not going to happen with us because we'll actually be able to go here. This is a movie from ancient times. You're going to love yeah. this one. But like, <laughs> obviously, Sorry. we can. Obviously, we as um. <laughs> People can share the films that we grew up on to yeah. our kids, but like we can't take them to the cinema and yeah, that's what I was just thinking. We can't take experience. them. There. They're gonna hate all the well, films at the cinema. I maybe. don't know. Maybe I don't know. We're, we're, maybe like one in a dozen. Maybe like yeah. one in a hundred. Okay, maybe they, maybe they'll like something. Amazing. Yeah, but okay? like, I saw that in the cinema. That came out what this year? Yeah, that was amazing. like last year, this yearish. Okay. I mean, yeah, but there the are exceptions is, to the rule. If I took, like, a child to see that and I was in a theatre with, like, a couple of children, they didn't have the same experience that I had because they, they didn't appreciate it on the level that I, that I had, you know? Mm. I appreciate it on, like, a technical level, on, like, an artistic level because I have never seen anything like that. And I just, I feel like if, if art is going in this direction, then, yes, it, it yeah, it sucks, but like I don't feel like art is going in that direction. I feel like we get movies that are actually pushing the boundaries. We get the Wolf Walkers, we get the the I Lost My Bodies, and we get the Spider Verses. You know, can we get more of there's them? No, there's no shortage of this. It's just it comes like 
it less often yeah. than it did when when it we were in like the nineties or two yeah. thousand. Do you what I was? Oh, I was just gonna say that that's probably because if you think about it, um, because it's easier to churn out just shit, isn't it? When you think about it, which is it is easier. Yeah, to, it is easier but in just less turn... effort, but more money. It's it's sure. definitely scary. I hope it doesn't like completely come to the point where animation isn't a thing where anyone puts sad. any effort into it. But what I will say is, to be fair, you if you were to look back at other people doing animation like throughout the nineties and two thousands, you would also probably find a lot of shit that's just been forgotten about. Oh, hundred percent. A lot of stuff sure. that at the time was probably huge um, that we don't talk about now. Like even if you think about like a lot of the shit that DreamWorks were doing throughout the two thousands, like Shark Tale. Hey, yeah, 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 yeah. No, fuck you. Yeah. Shark Tale <laughs> no, sucks. No, Shark Tale sucks. Shark Tale was awful. Absolutely abysmal. What the fuck? Like you look at that and like no, you think about terrible. Finding Nemo, a film that's actually like. <laughs> Stood the test of time and is still like yeah. one of the best animated movies ever made. <laughs> You're wrong, so Darcy. Awful. You are wrong. Shot I just like the bit where he goes, I'm not, I'm a, I don't know, something about a no, wiener. You, you don't <laughs> even remember it. <laughs> I don't even remember the You don't even remember why you like it. Someone, someone, come in the but comments yeah, this and is defend kind of what me. I'm saying. Like, <laughs> there's definitely films from like <laughs> all throughout time like, no, you're animated right. you films are right. that were really sucked. And we're probably like big at the time, and we've right. completely forgot about it. But we've like remembered the really good ones, I mean, and that's that... kind of what I'm hoping. Yeah. I'm kind of hoping in like a decade's time, Scoob will be forgotten, but Wolf Walkers will be a film. Right, right, Chris. Really let me tell you now, people. everyone's already forgotten Scoob. Already, I don't know what the yeah, fuck I mean, that was. It's... Scoob was I mean... a bit of a flop because it came out. Did it come out in the pandemic anyway? came out yeah. right at the beginning of the pandemic, so it was literally just, they just shut it out on stream. Was it in the cinema? Oh, no, okay. Never mind. No, because it came out a month or two after the pandemic, right, so they just put okay. it on streaming. Fair enough. I mean, I wouldn't the have faith in that film that either. with Wolf Walkers is that it goes straight to Apple TV. Yeah. I don't know if you guys have seen Wolf I've Walkers. I've not seen it, Chris Yeah, has. I've seen it. It's incredible. I would like so, to see it, but I, I don't think I will. I would love that on like a Blu-ray. But I can't get it on the Blu-ray. It is totally, it is exclusive to Apple TV. I cannot yeah. get it. Why have I not? Which seen is a shame this? because Apple TV is a terrible streaming service. Yes, yeah. so I literally get, got a trial of Apple TV to watch Wolf Walkers. So I've got a question, um, a stupid question. Now that I'm saying it out loud because I just heard what you guys said, but is there any way you can just like download it, like find it? Yeah. So you can probably pirate it. Yeah, you can pirate it, but, but if you want to watch it legally, Apple TV is the only place. Only because yeah. I, I haven't seen it and I kind of want to, but obviously I'm not, I don't really have the capability to watch it. Asher, that's Don't a worry, lie. we'll watch it just at some point. Yeah, Fuck watch. Apple. Okay, I've I'll, said I'll watch openly it anyway. before that I'll pirate anything on Apple TV because <laughs> it's a shit service. It, it is pretty it's terrible, done. to be fair. It's offering nothing. I just anyway, want to watch the film because it sounds really nice. Why should I have to suffer to for Apple's here. art? We were talking about Scoob. I know, I'm sorry, what are we doing? Right, sorry. We were, we've got into a whole discussion about animation. I love that we have. Do you know we why? Because it's Scoob. Right, sorry, so Scoob. Scoob. Fucking hell. No, sorry, I just, <laughs> just watched Chris pour a no, drink and I thought it was going to overflow. I literally just movie. pulled the rest of the drink. Oh, okay, so did I. Blue I'm Falcon. Going to... And he's in like this blue ship. Okay, Sorry, yes, cool. the blue falcon has a blue, blue falcon. Why they made the ship interior blue? To match the, the blue. Blue. It's just a match. I think that's what all it is. What the hell are you thinking? That's terrible art design. How dare you? Oh, I know, whoever was like the art director of this, I want to have yeah, a word who, with who, you. Who was the fucking DP? Come on. <laughs> I want to have a word. <laughs> How come it you're allowed terrible. to do things and I'm not? Terrible. <laughs> I'm so upset. It hey, was Dad. not good. Everything blended in with each other. It was like a smush of blue. He dabs. Oh, oh yeah, he dabs. dabs. Oh, my fucking God. Why did you remind me? That's also what I was wondering. Okay, yeah, there's was a suffering. lot of stuff in this movie that kind of hinders its longevity. That's what we were saying. Everything like, is literally dated. Yeah, like, there were things like Netflix. And it's like, wow, that's not going to age well. Yeah, he yeah. dabs. That's not going to age well. So, yeah. same thing for like Avengers. Avengers Endgame. Dabbing yeah. is already the aged. Worst, I feel like the worst <laughs> kids' movies are like that. 
though. Yeah. Like, I think of like um, the Smurfs movies from like ten years ago. They like had loads of jokes like that, and the Alvin and Chipmunks movies as well. They had loads of very of its time oh. jokes, like the first Alvin and Chipmunks movie where they're like playing Guitar Hero at one point. Like you watch that now, <laughs> and you're like, "What the fuck is that?" Yeah. But then you could no, no. I was gonna say you could kind of say that about films that have come out recently, though. Like I was gonna say like four playing Fortnite, but then I was like, people still play Fortnite. Never mind. <laughs> Well, that's no, not going to age no, well in that's not like five years. Okay, cool. At least, at least we're on the Hulk same page Dabin's there. going to age terribly as well. No, a lot, a lot of films are going to age terribly because they've decided to crack in on the over the time jokes. I'm not a fan of that. Why yeah. bother? But this film especially is not going to age well. It's already in aged. like two or three f- years. This film is going to be. It's not going to make any sense. Honestly, I think the dabbing thing has but already aged, and it's it's already aged. Yeah, yeah who's like, dabs anymore? Like well, what the, fuck? the dabbing thing aged the instant the film came out. Yeah, yeah, which is the sad part. Dabbing aged happened. when um when um Endgame came out. Dabbing in that was cringy. Like Max just said, Black Panther. The, the where are those? What are oh, those jokes? What are those? What are those? Yeah. That was like oh, cringe shit. at the time. Yeah, that was felt awful. like two or three years too late. Stop yeah. putting memes in movies. Do you know what I think? Is I think some of it does it come down to the fact that they start making these movies like well in advance, and then by the time it comes out, everyone's like, "Oh shit, maybe we should yeah. have left that one." Yeah, out. because memes last fucking like, one or two yeah, weeks. Like a week. <laughs> they need to stop it. That's like the problem with Modern Simpsons, where they like try and keep <gasps> up with stuff. It's horrible. But anytime Modern a new Simpsons. episode comes out, it's like a year out of date. Yeah, like they have a they have a series in no sorry an episode in like season thirty one. Where they like become like YouTube sensations, and it's just cringe. It's there's an episode so in the newest season that um is like a straight copy of um Knives Out. Oh, for God's sake! A film that came out in 2019. Um, see, I understand when they do it with, like when you make parodies of like classic cinema because that sort of makes sense to me. That sort of stuff's timeless and people know it. But if you're making obscure, obviously, I know Knives Out isn't exactly obscure, but when you're making like obscure uh film references and like jokes and stuff it's not as it's gonna die i think yeah i do want to dial things a little bit back towards scoob oh god for now i know we're not going to talk much more about it because we've been talking forever yeah but i do want to bring up um a dastardly and muttley right so um (laughs) dick dastardly is the villain yes um obviously from the cartoon wacky races Mm-hmm. A really, really huge staple of my childhood. Yeah, I, I used to watch that well. every single morning before like school for a long time. And I remember I used to get up early on like the weekends and I'd used to watch Wacky Races and The Hoobs every <gasps> single more like yes! Saturday and Sunday morning. So I know so much about um... Wacky Races. And I do not think they really did Dick Dastardly or Muttley that well. No. But what I will say is I, they did it a lot better than I was expecting they'd do it. Did they Dick... didn't completely fuck up the characters. I don't think either of them were great. Sorry, but... didn't Dick have a hat, though? He where did was his have hat, hat the whole fucking time? That, that was me. something I was like, like what the fuck is the that? Fuck is he didn't hat? have his hat. And what else annoyed me, right? This is more to do with the film than it is to do with the characters, right? But Muttley is stuck in this land of gold, right? He can't get out. There's no food for him. Why is he alive? Yeah. Someone tell me why Muttley is alive. At least he did his signature laugh. That was the oh, one that. That's my laugh. Yeah. His laugh is my laugh. He when, stole my laugh. When I saw Dick Dastardly, I didn't actually know he was in the movie. When I saw him, no. I was like, I hope Muttley's in this movie and I hope that's he does what I his thought, laugh. Yeah. So when you see Muttley and he does the laugh, I was like, okay. It's satisfying. At least you get yeah. that. Just the one thing about this movie. <laughs> Honestly, but like, where is his hat? <laughs> my favorite bit is where he goes, My name is Dick, I am a dick, and it's like supposed to be funny. They get it's... the most use out of that name as possible. Yeah, like, they had to... He literally repeats the word dick three times without saying yeah. anything in between. It's like, Dick, it... Dick, Dick, Dick. And then that's, that's why it's because, uh, because uh, Scooby has his um, the speech impediment only comes out when he has to say Dick because he goes, Rick, and everyone goes, No, Dick. dick. And it's just not funny. Uh, Sorry. It's just 
Yeah, but okay. how did Muttley survive? He's on fucking yes, treasure he did planet. Eat. He did eat. With only gold to eat. With no how gold to eat. I like yeah. that you're just like instantly showing off the Muttley laugh. <laughs> That's how he laughs. He laughs really. Yeah, he, goes... he laughs really breath- <laughs> breathlessly. He goes, <laughs> "That's where it hurts. It hurts." <laughs> it's like that. Yeah. It hurts. Oh. It hurts to do. Um, I just yeah, want to watch Wacky Races now. So I actually like that. Show. Honestly, it pissed me off that he wasn't wearing his hat the whole yeah, time. Same. I was like, "Where the fuck is his hat?" So annoying. And there's stuff like this, Max. Because Max was like, "Who the fuck is he?" And I was just like, "Oh." Yeah, I didn't know. I don't. I didn't yeah. watch him. I think he's a bit. I know they're not exactly like obscure characters because obviously, like people know them. But I feel like if kids were watching this, they're more likely to know who Scooby Doo yeah. is than he is. So what? Who kids the fuck is he? Kids won't know wacky races. Yeah, who the fuck is I he don't to think them? It, Boomerang isn't a channel anymore. That's no, where Boomerang I used to watch it. No, Boomerang died a long oh, time yeah. ago. So why did they do Dick Dastardly then? It kind of just feels like... Um, they wanted to make Avengers in the... No, I wouldn't even <laughs> say that. It kind of feels like they were like, oh, who the fuck should we get as a villain? Let's just pick someone we own. just feels like they couldn't be bothered to create a new villain for the movie. So they just picked someone they already Do you... had. See, that's kind of like... Young cl- Bugs Bunny. Yeah, I feel like they're kind of yeah. clutching at straws a little bit with us, though, because I feel like they kind of went... Oh, the adults, they loved him. They watch Wacky Racers. They'll get it. It'll be fun. Yeah, it's for like the parents of the, the I think kids. it is, because the show's Even really then, old, isn't I it? I say the parents of the kids. Wacky Racers but, was like a 60s, yeah, 70s it was from the sort 60s, of cartoon. I'm sure. So probably like trying to get the grandparents. To be honest, you <laughs> or should Or maybe like the kids who. You could have shoved Top Cat in there, it would have like the same. Literally, what was the point? No, the Top Cat was... had no, six, 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 his own movies. Yeah. yeah. I love Top Cat. I'm sorry. Like, yeah, it had no use. It it was pointless. Yeah, they're like trying to get the grandparents of current kids maybe to enjoy it, or maybe like the kids like our sort of generation who grew up because it was being re-shown, or maybe shown to us by our parents. I mean, I'm not mad at that, but I think it's stupid. I don't know. I don't even know like what my parents showed me. Um, but I, I have like love joy. Terminator Two. <laughs> if mum's watching this, like my mum showed me that the greatest kids movie. Ain't <laughs> show me any, She didn't show me any cartoons. <laughs> oh what cartoon or just kids movies? I think mine was what's that? What Mouse Hunt, Mouse Trap, Mouse Mouse Trap, Mouse Trap with Lee Evans. Yeah, I watched that when I was younger. What apparently, movie? Like I had that lot. on VHS. Um, I don't even remember the film. I couldn't tell you a single thing about it. I feel like we're too drunk to really carry on talking about Scooby. No, I, feel like I we hate this fucking no, movie. Talk... Can we just like end and end? Scooby Doo the... gets a super suit. I yeah, get we'll... a super suit. This film sucks. Like, like, this like completely. This film sucks. You want to take off your Scooby Doo collar? So he takes it off. He's like, no, this is the worst <laughs> thing in the world. Yeah. Oh, yeah, he's like, like, oh, no, this is like a departure from Shaggy and Scooby, the dynamic duo. And it's like, okay, but there's no reason you couldn't put the Scooby-Doo collar on after you got the suit on. Do you know okay? what? It was stupid as well. Why is that not an option? Because they, they put another collar on him, which was basically identical, but it was just like... Like, all mechanical. And I was like, what the fuck is this then? And he's like, oh, Scoob's too busy trying to save the world. He's too good for me. Okay. Um, <laughs> this is apparently the first film in the planned Hanna-Barbera cinematic universe. No, don't. No, it's not ha- no, no, right. No, if you, if you no. can hear us now, Warner Brothers, Hanna-Barbera crew, don't. Please don't. Just, just stop. <laughs> Please don't. It's Shaggy not worth dies. it. Shaggy dies in this movie. He Shaggy goes into, doesn't die he goes well, into the, does. the Cerberus realm. Okay, he goes into it. And then, and then okay, so he's like, okay, wait, there's like a thing. There's like a disc <laughs> on the on the big Cerberus door. He's like, oh, no, Scoob. I'll, <laughs> I'll sacrifice myself. <laughs> oh, my God. I'll sacrifice myself <laughs> for you. <laughs> and then he... <laughs> he, put, he puts his hand. He puts his hand on the fucking the big 
fucking Cerberus door. Oh, well, another movie with a big door. Where have we seen that <laughs> and, he, and he dies. He essentially dies. He goes to the underworld. He's like, I'm trapped in the underworld. And then I don't know what happened in between Shaggy essentially dying and then like they go to like the yeah. statue of um, whoever the fuck. And then um, Shaggy it was, like, it was like a uh, statue of them, I think. Yeah, and then he goes to the door and that, and it's like, oh, the statue was actually a door, and he comes out and it's like, okay, Shaggy's okay. What? Also, did anyone like, else what? find it? What just happened? Did anyone He's else like, find he it really? He was supposed to die. I, how did he come back? I have no idea. Because Velma read the inscription that was like, ah, friends are forever. Friends are never kept apart. And then Scooby cries, and his tears bring him back <laughs> to the statue or something. I don't fucking know. <laughs> <laughs> All I know is that it was funny as fuck. Uh. <laughs> we're almost it's at the three hour mark I feel like I we need to you, end why this. have we spoken this much about it we've, been, the we've wheel, been drinking yeah. we're, just... we're just chatting <laughs> shit at this point Ooh. okay um, okay I feel like that's it I feel like that's it, we're, we're done we're done with talking Scoob done Right. Let's... if it makes us feel any better Scoob 2 is apparently in the works so. right Please stop. Please stop. In fact, that actually made me feel worse. I feel a lot worse now that I, I exist and breathe. Well, obviously, we're going to rate this out of Scoobs. Yeah, why not? What do you mean, obviously? <laughs> obviously, we're going to rate it out of Scoobs. Oh, fuck. This film's fucking shit. This film's awful. Not even redeemable. I hate it so much. It just kind of like just represents everything I hate about about corporate kids movies about like just really lifeless movies where they just don't really give a shit it's just like very manufactured just completely like off the conveyor belt no one really cares about it it's just like it just exists because they felt like they could make money from it it just it's there's nothing to this movie i give it one scoops out of 10 Fuck this movie. Yeah, fuck this movie. Yeah, fuck this movie. Fuck this. It's shit. (laughs) It sucks. It's terrible. Fuck this movie. Don't make it anymore. Don't make another Scoob movie. Fuck you. How dare you make this movie? Okay, this sucks. It's terrible and I hate it. Okay, I think I've given enough reason as to why I hate it. Okay. Okay. One. One. One Scoob out of ten. (laughs) <laughs> um, one scoop out of ten it doesn't justify a reason I'm sorry this is honestly yeah. one of my least favourite films we've talked about on this podcast it actually might be my least favourite like at least Outlaw got some chuckles no. out of me for it being is, um, fucking ridiculous it's 100% my least favourite since um you've been on the podcast RC god I fucking hate it I like hate the it only so two films that I prefer to it or um, hate more than this were Repo and Shrek the Musical <laughs> Shrek the musical was quite the something. No, I hate Outlaw more than this because at least Scoop wasn't homophobic. Yeah. Because it what? At least ho- it- Scoop wasn't homophobic. Well, yeah, but I mean, at least Outlaw was, I don't know, gave me an actual genuine feeling of anger. Made me feel something. I just want to feel nothing okay. ever again. Are we ready to spin the That's wheel? Because I'm. That's done. I'm, We're spinning I'm the done. wheel again. Um, yeah, he's been in the so wheel now. What we're doing this month of October is um, we're going to do mostly. Well, we're going to do all horror movies. We're going to do horror movies this month. We're really excited for it. So we're going to spin the wheel, and Chris has got a an all horror uh, wheel. So uh, there is only got... four options on here, you know. There's, yeah, there's four, four options. Yeah. <laughs> so what do we what do we got? The next okay so basically what i did is i um because i'm like kind of like the horror connoisseur on this podcast i've seen like every horror movie ever made <laughs> darcy just stuck a middle finger up at me so she definitely doesn't agree with that no um, i do just i basically pretend. just picked um <laughs> four franchises that i feel like will be enjoyable okay. they may not be all great but at least 
that will they have won't fun. be miserable like a lot of horror franchises are. Right, and let's hold on, hold on, bring bring oh, it closer. Let me see it as it spins. It's like my favorite thing. Da, 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 da. What do we got? Okay. Oh hell yeah! Okay. The Scream movies. There's oh, four of them. Yes. Yeah. Do we want to watch all four? Yes. Uh, May as yes, well. Yes, yes, May yes, as yes, well. Yes. May as well. Well, there we go. We're going to do all four Scream movies next week. Yes. Lovely. Lovely. Okay. Cool. I fucking love that. Okay. Lovely. I love Brilliant. three of them. Yeah. Okay. I haven't... So, I'm, oh. I'm one to four. I don't think I've seen Watch the fourth them. one. Okay, I'm, re- I'm ready. No. I am ready. I haven't seen the fourth, fourth one in a very long time. I haven't no. seen um, two, three, or four in a long time. Really? But, no, yeah. No, exactly. Okay. see them. So... Brilliant. Can't wait. Wes I'm excited. Raven. I love him. I love that guy. Okay. Yeah. So, yes. It's fitting uh, as well because um, the trailer for the fifth one comes out this week. Oh, should we talk about that on the podcast? <sighs> yeah. All right. Come on, boys. Yeah. We need What's to wrap it? this up. It's been about four years. Yep. Okay. So, screen one to four. Watch it. Uh, and then, in the meantime, we've got the fall from the BBC player, go yes. watch that for episode 55 we're gonna watch the show the full the first scene first scene okay that's it and then the socials we got we got uh facebook we got no shit we got youtube maybe you're already listening on youtube we got the sunday movie marathon pretty simple twitter is at sunday movie pod facebook is at sunday movie marathon and letterboxd mm-hmm. If you are so inclined, at Sunday MM, capital S, capital MM. Thank you for listening to this very special episode of yeah. Sunday Movie Marathon. Oh, yeah, we did it. Well yeah. done, guys. Well done. I just downed my last drink and instantly feel 10 times drunker. Yeah, I feel absolutely dumb. I already felt drunk, but like suddenly like downing the rest of that drink i'm just like it's instantly hit yeah me. this is this is what regret feels like um also i actually can't believe we managed to turn a one hour podcast into four hours four hours oh, three hours what are you it's talking three about hours. yeah it's not oh, four I, hours. I, I have no concept of time <laughs> anymore we're no elephants still yeah, I, I feel like we should never drink again on this podcast. I actually think a hot take, Maybe we should drink more. Episode, we'll yes, drink the again. 100th episode will do it but again. But until then, yeah, <laughs> in the 100th kind of episode, we'll just of, die. Yeah, it was a bit of a novelty. We already know what we're doing, but I'm doing that <laughs> Do we? Oh, yes, we, we do. do. Yeah, we, we do. do. But until then, <laughs> until the 100th episode, thank you very much for listening to this episode of the Sunday Movie Marathon. Uh, catch you on the next episode. We will talk about screen one to four. Thank you very much. Goodbye. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no. Everybody said it one way or the other, so check out my message to you. As a matter of fact, I don't know the whole back. If the sad man can do it, so can you.